It is a beautiful Sunday morning for baseball as we wrap up opening weekend in Arlington for the third and final day of the Shriners Children's College Showdown presented by Kubota. Inside Globe Life Field, we jumpstart the day with a renewal of a former Big 12 rivalry as the Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the Oklahoma Sooners. Glad to have you with us on Flow Sports along with Ty Harrington. I'm Brain Freeman. And again, Ty, what a great tournament this has been to jumpstart a brand new college baseball season. I mean, it's been opening weekend, opening day, and it's been incredible. And the talent out here this weekend has been unbelievable. The arms that they've run out there, everything has been exciting. Today's going to be no different. Let's talk more about Nebraska Cornhuskers program led by Will Bolt. And Nebraska so far in the tournament, 1-1, one one, won the opener against Baylor, fell short yesterday against Texas Tech. Well, they, they've had to kind of rehaul a little bit of their lineup after losing so many draft picks the year before. And I, you're starting to see some of those guys settle in. Some of their at-bats are getting better. And again, they've been better on the mound. I mean, it's just an exciting time for both these teams, and particularly for OU coming off of a late night last night. We now take a look at today's batting lineup brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. So far, Nebraska in the tournament hitting 242. The lineup today for Coach Will Bolt, Brumbaugh, Overby, Carey start things off. Middle part of the order, Karen Stone and Swanson. And the lineup rounded out by Bradford, Evans, and Riley Silva here this morning. And this Nebraska batting order will be up against James Hitt, the Oklahoma starter a year ago in his first year with the program after transferring from Texas Tech was named honorable mention all Big 12. Well that's a good arm I mean you can see the stats and I mean, it, it, it's, it's a lot of breakers a lot of change-ups well I tell you what and then he wants to get after you with that fastball and don't be surprised when you see him pitch the right-handed hitters on the inside part of the plate today he likes to get underneath them with that fastball. Again, the numbers for hit impressive six and two a year ago and 70 innings of work. The Oklahoma Sooners also one and one in this tournament so far. Dropped the opener against Oregon on Friday, but then they won perhaps the game of the tournament last night in 10 innings against ninth ranked Tennessee. This is an OU program playing in its final year in the Big 12. This time next year, they'll be in the SEC. 32 wins last year for OU. As we take a look inside the dugout to again Will Bolt for the Sooners, Skip Johnson for the, uh, Will Bolt for the Huskers, Will Skip Johnson for the Sooners. Guided this team to its 40th NCAA tournaments and Skip Johnson's program just two years removed from the College World Series where they were runners up in Omaha in 2022. Not surprised. Look, I had a chance to watch you know, that season. I got to see OU early in the year. And let me say this. First of all, I'm not surprised because Kip Johnson's at the helm of it, the, the, success, the success that they're having. But one thing always about one of the Skip's teams, and you saw it on display again last night, they are always pitch strong. They know how to pitch. He knows how to develop pitchers. And if you watch him, he knows how to call a game. And it's fun to watch if you're a baseball purist. And, Ty, you said it. You look at the pitching last night against that potent Tennessee lineup. And Skip Johnson's staff was outstanding. Three different arms combined for 15 strikeouts, especially good with runners on base. Tennessee was one for 15 against Oklahoma pitching last night of those situations. I think we're ready. 
Yes, we are. Hit on the mound. Brumbaugh in the box. And a pleasant good morning to you from DFW in Arlington from Globe Life Field. First game of the final day. And we're underway with a ground ball to third, vacuumed up by Snyder. One pitch and one out starts this Sunday morning. Well, two things it tells you as a coach. Number one, Nebraska being aggressive early going after a first pitch, but also with hit, you start to see right him. He ran that fastball underneath the right hand in here. He wants to get that fastball underneath to open the gate for the changeup and the breaker away. So one up, one down for James Zip. Going to bring up Josh Overbeek for Nebraska. Having a good tournament so far, four for nine. And he's going to take a sinker on the outer half and misses one ball to no strikes to Overbeek. Takes another sinker, runs a count to 2 0 to get overbeat the batter here for Nebraska. You saw the numbers came from his JUCO program last year where he hit 415 for Cisco Junior College, drove in 55. And now his first year with the Cornhuskers. That's in there for a strike, 2 and 1. Taken all the way. Anytime the hitter before you starting a game, a particular leadoff hitter, swings at the first pitch, the next guy knows he's got to absorb a couple of pitches because he doesn't want the starting the pitcher to have an easy first inning. You got to try to get a minimum or somewhere average around 15 pitches an inning out of these guys to get their pitch count up. Come in, come in. A miss high there from hit. Runs a count to three and one. Overbeek again at Juco last year, but started his career at Pitt. Only 21 games with the Panthers before moving on to Cisco Junior College. And draws, so one out walks. Overbeek is on with his first walk of the tournament, and the Cornhuskers have their first base runner. It's a great job right there, coming off a first pitch out, getting in there, being patient, making him throw that ball across the plate. Drawing a walk, also drawing some pitches out of hit early. Now Dylan Carey here for Nebraska, a sophomore from Castle Rock, Colorado. Coming off a productive freshman season last year, starting 53 games, hitting 275. And Carey so far, a good tournament. Has hit a couple of doubles, has driven in three for Nebraska. Recapping the tournament so far for the Cornhuskers started Friday with the very first game here at Globe Life. A 4-1 win over Baylor. And that game was tied. 1-1 going into the eighth inning. Some big hits late from Dylan Carey who's batting now. Garrett Anglin with a late home run. And Nebraska's bullpen held the Bears scoreless over the final three innings. Swing and a miss ahead of the changeup, one and one. I, I got down on the field a little bit before the game day to go watch BP and, and say hello to some old coaching friends when I was down there. I had a chance to watch this young man here take BP. Now, he's a, an impressive in stature. If you look at him in height and shoulder and weight and strength, but let me tell you what's even more impressive. Watch that young man swinging a bat. And it, he was putting on a show this morning. Obviously, there's a ton of scouts here for this tournament because there's so much talent in this tournament. And you can watch and look around the stadium and, and see. I mean, a lot of guys are focused in on him. He's a good-looking player. Nebraska played in another tie game yesterday against Texas Tech. That was a 3-3 game going into the ninth inning. But the Red Raiders scored three times at the top of the ninth, all three runs scoring with two outs. Tough loss for Nebraska yesterday. There you see right there coming back in with the inside fastball. When those hitters try to look out there for changeups and breakers away off left-handed pitchers. Hit loves to run that ball on the third base side of the plate, and he's 
good at it. And if you're good at it, you drive that thing and it is really tough on those right-handed hitters to get that barrel inside of it and make any kind of extension contact with it. And Carey shoots that to left field with a base hit. First of the day for Nebraska. And the strong tournament continues for Carey. His fourth hit. Two on for the Huskers. Only one out. Just a good looking piece of hit right there. He, we get a chance to see this right here. Will change up away. Stays on it. Pulls it through the six hole. Strong enough. Keeps the bat in line. Look at this. Frank keeps that bat extended through the baseball in there long enough to get it through and drive it through with a barrel. Two on, one out brings up Josh Karen for Nebraska. One for six so far in the tournament. With that win, by the way, over Baylor on Friday, Will Holt, Will Bolt is now approaching a milestone. Got 98 wins now at his alma mater. That ball is skied in the air, in to right. And Bryce Madrin, plenty of time, makes a catch. And the runners are going to hold two outs. Ball not quite deep enough, Grant, for them to advance 90 feet. The good pitch popped it up to right field. Watch Madrin get behind. He'll get behind the ball. Brant does a good job as an outfielder are taught. Gets in position to throw. That's just textbook baseball, and particularly from the outfielders. They're holding the runners to second base. Now it takes a single to get them in, as opposed to advancing 90 feet to third base. Yeah, Tyler Stone batting with two on and two out. Left on left matchup. That's high for ball one. So again, Ty will bolt two and shy of 100 at Nebraska, where he was a second baseman of the early 2000s, team captain for a couple of World Series teams. And a very proud alum. He is one of just 54 Division I coaches who are now the head coach at their alma mater. Yeah, and, and look, I had a chance. I'm going to say this my way. I'm young enough that I had a chance to coach against him in the early 2000s, and they, they really had it going on at that point in time. They were going to Omaha often, and he was a great team leader. We had a chance to compete against him, and you can see when you coach long enough, you can see the guys that are leaders out there on that field, and he certainly was one of them. Is young enough the right phrase? It is for me. I said this was what I was going to say for yeah. me. <laughs> I'll bet that's what you'll say. So here's Tyler Stone for Nebraska, the cap two and one. Still on a first-year junior college transfer from Iowa Western. Really good JUCO program. Monster numbers last year. That's fouled back. OPS over 1,200. And JUCO hit 15 homers, drove in 66. And another player who actually began his career at a D1 program before going the JUCO route and now in Lincoln. Stone began his career at Gonzaga. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. First strikeout of the morning for James Hit. But the throw to first base gets away. The runners advance. And now the throw to home gets all the way to the backstop. Two runs are going to score. And Nebraska's on top 2-0. Well, there's a lot to unfold right here. And we'll get a chance maybe to replay this. It's strike three on a breaker away from Stone into the dirt. Carmichael does a good job of blocking it, keeping over. He reaches for it, I think, the first time, kind of miss it. Patiently reaches back down, grabs it, creates a throwing lane, and it just looks like maybe got under it just a little bit, Brent, and elevates the throw to first base. Here's the first piece. Rocks it, keeps it in front like you're supposed to, misses it, doesn't panic, gets back up, but then goes high with a throw, and now a lot of different things are going to go. It goes past him, a runner scores, coming all the way from second in, and then the throw to the plate, not in time, and gets away from Carmichael again, allowing... Another runner to come in. Two runs on an errant throw from the catcher. Boy, difficult play there for Oklahoma. James said you get a strikeout. You believe you're out of the jam. You end the inning. But the errant throw leads two runs. And by the way, Stone now at second base. Two nothing, Nebraska on top. And for the Sooners, their third error of the weekend. Now the inning extends to Gabe Swanson. Yeah. 
Foul away, strike one. You know, after the play was made and, and, and everything, the dust settled a little bit, you saw Skip Johnson came out and was visiting with home plate umpire Doug Williams, and the reason for it was making sure that the runner wasn't in the lane. But really and truly, I think he was buying some time for his catcher and his pitcher to catch their breath and get ready for the next hitter. Swanson, a big presence in the box, takes a strike, falls behind 0 and 2. Second team all Big Ten a year ago for Nebraska. That's high. Ball and two strikes to Swanson. The, the Cornhuskers' top returning run producer from last year drove in 57 for Nebraska, starting in 49 games. Much bigger role than he had the year prior. On the check swing, he goes around. And that time, Carmichael able to find the ball and tag out Swanson to end the inning. But a critical error by Easton Carmichael leading to two runs for Nebraska. Cornhuskers on top early with Oklahoma coming to bat. Watch me. Watch me grapple, move, and pin. When I hit the mat, don't underestimate the grin. I've got state championships and medals to show. But it's about more than just winning. This you should know. Overcoming odds and therapy and care. The road was long. Now opponents beware. Watch me. Game-changing sports medicine at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Protecting what matters most is the mission that matters most. At Lockheed Martin, we know today's threats come from behind, above, and below. And we make sure those who serve stay ahead of them by connecting platforms necessary to dominate every domain across air, land, sea, space, and cyber, using technologies that protect in the same moment they detect. The mission is a safer, more secure world. Our promise is to help make it happen. Globe Life Field is your home for college baseball with three full weekends of action starting February 16th at the home of the Texas Rangers. It all starts with the Shriners Children's College Showdown presented by Kubota featuring Baylor, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Oregon, Tennessee, and Nebraska. Next is the Kubota College Baseball Series with Arkansas, Oklahoma State, Michigan, and Oregon State in Weekend 2 and TCU, Texas A&M, Arizona State, and USC for Weekend 3. To get tickets and learn more, visit globelifefield.com slash collegebaseball. Today's batting lineup brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. This is the batting order for Sooners head coach Skip Johnson, John Spikerman, Bryce Madrid, Easton Carmichael. We'll leave things off with the first. Michael Snyder, Rocco Garza Gangora, who had a big hit last night against Tennessee, along with Kendall Pettis, middle third of the order, bottom third. Sooner newcomers Jackson Willits, Isaiah Lane, and Jason Walk. Today's DH. On the mound today for Nebraska is Caleb Clark. Only not appearances a season ago. Record one and one, 17 innings of work, elevated ERA, and a 14 to 11 strikeout to walk ratio on the mound here for the Huskers, leading two nothing after a critical defensive mistake by Oklahoma in the top of the inning, committed by Carmichael. And Ty, you caught something after he threw the ball over the first baseman's head. And when the next batter came up, kind of threw a ball into the, the grass, trying to get it back to his pitcher. Well, I mean, it's, I, I think he was probably living back on that same throw. And so it happens to a lot of guys. And so he moved on to on the next one, was able to fire the ball right back to the pitcher. And so now he did get, look, it's, it's a tough, you know, baseball's crazy. That's why, you, you know, learning how to control the baseball is so important. The defensive side of it, you take it for granted on throwing and catching the balls. We're going to see it again right here. And it is part of the game. One away. Near the bottom of the first. Spikerman retired. As we look at the Nebraska defense. Behind Caleb Clark. Four Huskers so far have fielded the ball really well in the tournament. 
985 fielding percentage, only one error committed. And they have not allowed a stolen base in games against Baylor and Texas Tech. First pitch, a strike to Madrin. Look back at the tourney for Oklahoma. Lost the opener Friday to Oregon 4-2. If you recall, the Sooners got shut down by Oregon's bullpen. Oklahoma held to just two hits over the final six innings, but last night bounced back in a huge way, winning a thriller over number nine, Tennessee. That's a fly ball hit by Madrin. Right to Evans in right field. Two up and two down for Caleb Clark. 5-1 win for OU over Tennessee in 10 innings. We talked about how good the pitching was. And again, clutch hits in the 10th. It was Spikerman who hit the go-ahead double in the 10th inning with Carmichael and Garza Gungor adding some insurance. And speaking of Carmichael, steps into the box now. Swing and a miss. Change up from Clark. It's nothing in one. You know, if you go back and you look at the stats for Clark from a year ago, he, that's a high walk ratio for what you want for pitchers. That's just below a, a one an inning at 17 innings and 11 walks. And the command was probably where it needed to be a year ago. You can see where he and Coach Charles just have gone to work now. Commanding, being able to go out there and throw first pitch changeups for strikes is huge. And then throwing the ball in the inner half, these right-handed hitters. You can see right there, he's got good life on that fastball as well at 91 miles an hour. From Ontario, Canada... Clark was ranked as one of the top five Canadian prospects coming out of high school. That's fouled away. Out of play for Easton Carmichael. And by the way, with his start today, Clark is just the sixth Cornhusker to be an opening weekend starter as both a freshman and a sophomore. Got those honors last year. And getting them again here in 2024. I do have to note that Will Bolt had to really reassess the weekend rotation this year as two of the starters from a year ago drafted this past summer. Just misses on the sinker. Boy, what's a good looking fastball was in. Doug Williams, home plate umpire, has been, he's seen a lot of pitches in his lifetime, and that ball was just in off the plate, but he would change up away, then he went back in with his fastball. Tried to double him up right there again. That's hard on those right-hand hitters because you want to try to look out over the plate and look away. And the guy can come in there with 91, 92 right underneath you and tie that barrel up. Got a piece, and Carmichael stays alive. Sophomore out of Prosper, Texas, was named to the Big 12's all-freshman team a year ago. That ball headed towards the line and right going to fall in fair for a base hit for Carmichael. Tucked into the corner. Carmichael on his way to second, and he's in standing with a two-out double. That's a great piece of hit right there. They go a couple of balls in on him, fastballs and a breaker in on him. He stays with his plan, able to shoot this ball down the right field line. That's a great piece of hit. Look at this right there, Brant. Sees it looking away. Now he's going to drive it to right field. Able to get all the way to second base for a double. East to Carmichael, the younger brother of Braden, who was the ace on the Sooner staff a season ago. Braden. Drafted over this past offseason. Really cool moment, though, for Carmichael. He was catching when his brother tossed a two-hit complete game shutout against rival Oklahoma State. How fun would that be to be a parent sitting up or nerve-wracking? Yeah. <laughs> Might be the right word for it. But, hey, once you get that 27th and final out, it's not <laughs> yeah. nerve-wracking anymore. Yeah. It's Michael Snyder. Sooner so far. Five for 21 of the tournament with two outs. They were really good last night in situations with runners in scoring position against Tennessee. Four for 11. Opportunity here for Michael Snyder with Carmichael is second. Well, they'd love to answer. And after, you know, Aaron, the first inning, you know, two runs, 
runner and runs to be able to come back here maybe with a two-out single to answer back with some runs and gain some momentum back from the mistake in the first inning would be important for OU. Snyder so far one for six here in Arlington. Lone hit a double. For a player last year at Washington playing in the Pac-12 for the Huskies at 254. That rolls up the first base line. Karen can't find it. And Carmichael's going to take third base. That's a good job of base running. Ball gets far enough outside arm's length. You'll see the catcher go to his knees right here on the replay. Goes down to his knees, blocks it, does what he's supposed to. But once it goes that way, Brent, and the catcher's momentum's going away from third base, it's hard for them to pick that ball up and throw back towards third base. That's great base running. Two and two to Snyder. You bring a base running tie, it's been a strength for the Sooners over the past couple of seasons. Grounded to the third baseman, Overbeek. Plays it well. Good throw to Stone across the diamond. And the Sooners strand Carmichael at third. We go to the second. Nebraska on top. 2-0 over the... When you finally discover that perfect vacation, give in to it. It's a Kissimmee thing. A place where plans get bigger. Welcome to more than special. Kissimmee, the big bold heart of Florida. Welcome back to Low Life Field here in Arlington. Now time for today's coach interview brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Joined by Nebraska head coach Will Bolt. And uh, coach, I feel like the way this game has started. Two runs in the first inning and some good pitching from your sophomore in the bottom of the inning. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, just a good fortune there with a with an error with a with a strikeout. But that's why you that's why you run down the line. You don't assume anything there. Stone did a nice job once he realized the ball was down, got down the line, and uh, we ended up being able to score a couple runs. and got the shutdown in the bottom half. Hey, Will, it's time. I got to be honest with you, and they were talking about it earlier when you were a young player, and I happened to be coaching against you. And I could see just a little bit of gray in that little facial hair coming out now now that you're coaching. But first of all, tell us a bit what it means to you every day to go out here at your alma mater and be able to be the head coach and represent your university. Yeah, coach. Yeah, it is. It's everything. I mean, and, and when I first got into coaching, uh, the thought of, of being able to come back and then lead the, lead the way for the, the Huskers, I mean, that, that's a dream come true. So when people say, hey, I'm just living the dream, I, I'm, I really am. Coach, we saw a lot of progression from your team last year. Tim would improve it from the year prior. How do you feel about your group heading into this season? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've played a pretty good brand of baseball the first two games here, kind of what we expected coming in. I like the toughness of the group, the cohesion. They're tight, even though we have a lot of new faces here. Um, you know, just just got to stay the course, just stay, stay competing. Coach, thanks so much, and best of luck the rest of the day. You bet. Thank you. All right, that again, fifth-year head coach for Nebraska, Will Bolts. Going to pick up career win number 99 here today. You know, there's a, you can see on they're, they're looking for the earpiece for the catcher. And, and look, this is how the game has changed so much. And for the better. Look, look, this is not a complaint by my, stra uh, my you know, thinking. You got technology. It speeds the game up. 
there's there's clarity now. There's no sign stealing, you know, from the second base runner as often because everybody's getting the signs from the from the dugout. And but with that, with technology, like anything else in life, you got to fix it every once in a while. You can see they've got it looked like a paper clip, binder clip, a binder clip that yeah. they were clipping it with. You can see Skip Johnson going, "What's wrong with it? How do we get, let's go?" Well, apparently there were issues last night for Carmichael in the game against Tennessee. The battery died yeah. on that communication device. So Skip Johnson relays a call into his catcher, Carmichael. Have to get the ever ready battery. Well, here's Ty Schilling for battery companies. Wouldn't throw up Duracell or Energizer. Yeah, yeah I mean, the Energizer bunny, right? Oh, one to Bradford. That's foul back. Ty, we, we talked to all these coaches about how much the game has evolved and changed over the last five, ten years. You go even further back than that. You know, you coached for 20 years at the Division One level. How much has the communication changed in terms of getting a pitch call from the dugout to the field? Well, I mean, it's the, the communication parts is, as you can see, that, that's a lightning breaker on the outer half of the plate for striking it's it's huge because it just, it's one they're asking to speed the game up right so you're able to do that and used to you're you're giving signs from the dugout to the catcher everybody in the other dugout was watching as you see that breaker running away from him it was watching to see if they could pick up your pitches signs you know when runners would get at second base so many things about it it's just sped the game up and it made it it's made it cleaner Second, or make it the third strikeout for hit. Now facing Cole Evans here with one away, the second. You can see Skip right there holding his hand over his mouth, too, making sure nobody's reading his lips, and, and then also trying to get it in without any echo. That's high 2 0 against Skip Johnson, regarded as one of the top pitching coaches in the country since his arrival. In Norman, 24 Sooner pitchers have been drafted. His pitching so far in the tournament has had a 1.89 ERA against some really good lineups and 28 strikeouts. Well, it'll be a competition, not by design, between Coach Johnson and Coach Childress and how quickly these guys are so good at what they do and have been down this road so much. You'll be able to see just how quick they get the next pitch in and how ready they are. They're one pitch ahead, if not two pitches ahead, on each batter. That's fouled back by Evans. So far, Cole Evans, one for five over the weekend with a couple of strikeouts. Was the third leading hitter for Nebraska a year ago. Check swing, does he go? He does, says Scott Johnson at first base. Four straight strikeouts now for James Hit. Two down. Well, they got him sped up with a fastball and the pitch before. And he comes back. Watch this inline breaker. That thing's like that same fastball he was throwing in. Looks like a fastball. He just can't stop that barrel. That barrel does get out in front. It was the right call and a good job. Carmichael was scooping it up, keeping it in front of him, and tagging him out. Nobody on two away for Riley Silva. Ahead early, one ball, no strikes. Silva two for seven here in Arlington. First year junior college transfer from Barton County. Another Canadian in this game, by the way, from Ontario. They've had a huge influence on the roster. I mean, I look at a lot of them coming through the junior college ranks and maybe even through the portal, but they've had a huge influence on this, you know, on the Nebraska roster and, and all over the country, for that matter. Look, at, we talked about it yesterday or, or maybe on Friday that it, there's a lot of great, young baseball players from Canada 
that I mean, they're it, the weather's a you know tough on them. So man, you get a young guy like that, who knows how much potential they have. Do have to know, by the way, that Oklahoma taking the field, 10:30 first pitch here, early, much earlier than that, obviously for BP and getting ready for the game. Less than a 12-hour turnaround after last night's marathon against Tennessee ended around 11 p.m. local. Welcome to baseball. Welcome to college baseball. I mean, I, look, it's not ideal. I mean, it's not. But in the same breath, you know that as a coach. I mean, they, they, they know it as players. These guys have been doing Hey, and they play travel baseball or, or, you know, in high school baseball even. Well, good looking pitch right there. You're going to have to get up early here once in a while. James Hitt strikes out the side as we take a look back at last night's incredible game between Oklahoma and Tennessee here in Arlington. It's the nightcap on day two of the 2024 Shriners Children's College Showdown. Oklahoma out of the Big 12 against Tennessee. First pitch drilled by Amick. A long run and a beautiful catch. Kendall Pettis. And absolutely mashes one to right center. You can forget about it. Home run for Dryling is the ball strike back. Good move, and they got him. They're 2 2. Swing and a miss. Burke expecting bunts. He shows, and it's a diving attempt. Wow, it's caught. A double play. And they can get all three. How about a they get play? all three. <laughs> Chop to the left side. Moore has to hurry. Makes a strong throw to get the fast running tennis. Punches it to the left side. Long run for Dryling. Can't get there. It's off his glove. Oklahoma takes the lead. On an RBI double by John Spikerman. Shot to the left side. Long run for Moore. He can't get there. One run is in. Carmichael scores. And it's another big knock for Garza Gongor to make it 5-1. Oh, and that does it. Oklahoma wins the marathon as they use a four-run tenth inning to bounce back from a bitter defeat last night and take down top ten Tennessee. Now, look, every game has had moments so far through the first two days, but last night and that game between Tennessee and OU had about everything, a triple play, drama. Uh, you had a pitcher being forced to change gloves. We'll talk more about that later as well, which actually happened before the triple play. Oklahoma coming through in a big way in the top of the 10th inning. And that was a phenomenal matchup between the Sooners and the Vols, which will eventually be a conference matchup of the SEC. Well, it was excitement. I mean, to an incredible high level. I had a chance. I was sitting down in one of the suites below with Josh and with the Rangers, and I was sitting down there talking to them about, you know, baseball and the, the life on those guys' fastballs on ground level was just unbelievable. Garza Gungor, who had one of the big hits in the 10th inning last night, leaves off the second with a base hit here. So the Sooners have their second hit of uh, the morning. Going to bring up Kendall Pettis. And Ty, so again, you have two great programs, Oklahoma against Tennessee. Both have been to Omaha in recent years. And the fan bases have traveled extremely well. Of course, Norman not too far here from Arlington. And the Vols fans, very passionate, have flown in from Knoxville. This felt last night like a regional, a super environment, and maybe even somewhat like Omaha last night. I don't think there's any doubt. The crowd was unreal. As you just mentioned, the excitement, the intensity. I'm telling you, when I was standing down there and I was at crown level, just to hear the mitt and the movement and the excitement and watching the the, the kids run around, the players run around, and, and their energy, and, and it was it's a great way to put it. It was regional play, super regional play. Wouldn't shock anybody that's watching this or listening to this right now that this happened, that you know, that does happen, you know, you know, back in May or you know, looking ahead into May. Heck, I was sitting there at a restaurant watching the game on my phone. Next thing I know, I got like four or five people standing over my shoulder watching the game with me. Pettis had a big catch last night in the game, grounds out here, but only one play for Nebraska on the force at second. That'll send Rocco Garza Goncora back into the Sooners dugout. Pettis to first base and one out. 
Oh, that's a good patient play by Brumball right there by just staying with that ball. You're not going to get a double play out of this. He recognized it. Watch his drop step back there and just shovels the ball over to the shortstop. Not going to get two, but keeping the lead runner off of second base out of scoring position. Brings up Jackson Willits with one away. And now that ball in the dirt. And going over to second base, the throw is in time. Karen guns him out. Brumball with the tag of Pettis. Good defense from Nebraska and two outs through the second. Oh, that's a great throw. He goes to his knees to block this ball right here. Gets up fr from the ground, picks it up, throws all in one motion, makes a, 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 an intense throw because that ball had a lot behind it to get him out of second base. And if you're OU, they're taught to run on ball and dirt. And that's exactly what he reacted to to try to get into scoring position. Base is empty for Willits. Cap 3 0 brought out the triple play last night, and Willis was the one that hit into it. The first triple play for Tennessee since 1997. You know how long ago that was? That's when Peyton Manning was still a quarterback in Tennessee. That was a long time ago. Willits draws a two-out walk. First walk of the game given up by Caleb Clark. Stands inning now to Isaiah Lane. Freshman here for the Sooners, a top 100 prospect out of the state of California from Chula Vista, California. Be surprised if you know if they throw another breaker in the dirt or change up in the dirt, they'll try to go again. This is that's part of OU's baseball. I mean, that's they they're looking to go 90 feet any chance they get. Just a care made a great throw, and it, and on that throw, it's it's a great teaching for if you're a young you know catcher. He picks it up, does not go back to his glove, picks it up from the ground and throws in one motion, and that's critical if you're throwing from behind a plate, particularly if guys are going on ball and dirt. Again, this is a program of base stealers over the past two seasons, 259 stolen bases. Another throw back to first, trying to shorten that lead. And Ty, you brought this up on Friday with the way that OU runs the bases. They call it creating chaos, but chaos again spelled C H A O U S. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when I saw it, I was like, hey, have I been in spelling chaos all this? <laughs> Wrong all this time? Is this, which is possible, by the way. I'm just it, glad you didn't spell with a K. Yeah, right. I can't tell you, Willits is trying to get out of there and steal right now, and they're doing a good job with the left, left hand and move over there, keeping him at bay a little bit. And, but any chance they can, trying to catch him in a breaker count or trying to, to guess if it's a changeup and which helps you as a base runner trying to get out of it for a steal. And we're going to we're gonna see Coach Childers come out and just talk to him. I think he got sped up a little bit with the base runner at first base. You mentioned Coach Childress, Rob Childress. This is his second year now at Nebraska, of course, the head coach at Texas A&M for 16 seasons. Took the Aggies to the World Series twice. He's been one of the greats in college baseball for a long time. Yeah, he is. He's a great person, too, by the way. I mean, and a true friend of mine, longtime friend and competitor, um, which, you know, some people can confuse that at times. You can be all the above. And uh, he's a great uh, motivator. He's incredibly creative with his thoughts. He reacts on his thoughts. And he's a tremendous teacher of how to throw a baseball and where you're trying to throw it and, and what to, you know how to compete with it in big moments. He's always been able to do that. When he was at AM, he, he was always known for having, ironically, we're seeing one out here today, having about 10 left-handers on his on his staff and, and certainly out here today as well. But he's a great teacher. 2-0 to Lane. And this is second at bat here over the weekend. Another throwback to first base. And again, Willits back in. He's got a little cat and mouse game going on right now. Willits is trying to get out of there and go steal second base. And I think what Coach Childress was doing was just trying to slow his pitcher down a little bit. And let's get back to pitching. On the ground is short. 
And the flip to second carry to Brumball will take care of the Sooners in inning number two. We play two. The lead is two for Nebraska on top two zip as we head to the top of the third on Flow Sports. When you finally discover that perfect vacation, give in to it. Welcome to Kissimmee. A place where plans get bigger. Welcome to more than special. Kissimmee, the big bold heart of Florida. We said it at the top of the broadcast. This is a renewal of a former longtime conference rivalry in the old Big 8 and later the Big 12. Nebraska versus Oklahoma. These two have played each other exactly 250 times. However, this is the first meeting between these two programs in 13 years. Last played each other in 2011 in what was Nebraska's final year in the Big 12. Well, I think a lot of people... You know, when it was the big eight, you got to be of a certain age to recognize when that was, but and how important these two teams were in that conference, and the, and then the Big Twelve, and I mean, it's a, it's a good. I'm not going to use the word heated. It's a, it's a, a vibrant. You know, two teams getting after each other. I mean, they they like it and fan bases, all the above. They remember. I mean, I'm sure you could throw out some football and some baseball games out here, and half these fans are going to remember, if not all of them, are going to remember it. Brumbaugh fouls it away, his second half out of the morning, slowly turning into the afternoon. Gene Brumbaugh, sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. Didn't play with the Sooners last year. He was a red shirt after transferring in from Oklahoma State. I was trying to come up with healthy rivalry. That's what I was headed with that brand, <laughs> just so you know. I figured as much, and you would know a lot, Ty, obviously, with your ties to the University of Texas. Well, see, yeah, all three of them have a lot of rivalries. And did that get a piece of them? No, in the dirt. Catfields to Brumball, three and two. It's Brumball over Beak and Carey for the Sooners. To the top of the third. Team that won 33 games last year, a 10 win improvement from a year ago, the 10th biggest win improvement in the nation in 2023. And Will Bold excited about this year's team. A lot of offensive production back from last year. 46% of the offense back from a season ago as Brumball draws a leadoff walk. First time the leadoff man has reached for Nebraska today. Well, that's going to swing it back to the top of the order. I mean, I'm sorry. I got a little bit right there. My bad. But it, it, with him at the top of the order, now the top third of your lineup has a chance to do something the second time that they've seen the pitcher. 
you start to gather information as the game goes on, and particularly after you're at bat, when you go into the dugout, Brad, you sit in and you just watch these guys and see the pattern that they're trying to pitch to and how they're trying to attack you. Joshua Overbeek walked and scored in his first at bat. Although a lot is back for Nebraska, also several players drafted this past year. Fourth in the top ten rounds. First time that's happened for the Huskers program since 2005. And the highest pick, Bryce Matthews, 28th overall to the Houston Astros. That bunt's going to shoot foul. 0-2 to Joshua Overbeek. It's kind of interesting. He hit that time on the mound, used a slide step instead of using his leg kick. Went to a slide step, trying to protect the, the possibility of a hit and run, shorten it up to the catcher some, which would allow him a little bit more time to throw if they did swing and miss or if it was a steal situation. 43rd pitch of the day coming up for James Hitt. Puts the bunt down, able to keep it fair. That's productive for Overbeek. That'll move Brumbaugh over to second base. If you want to look at how a bunt, a sacrifice bunt, supposed to be, this is it right here. The runner on first. You want the first baseman to have to come in and make this play. We get a chance to see it right here on replay. This is just textbook right here. Out over the plate, back foot down, behind him where you can see the right side, pushes it to the right side, stops to allow the runner to make sure he gets to second base. Will Bull showing a lot of confidence in Josh Overbeek still putting the bunt on on two strikes. Well, I mean, it, it, he's got a lot of confidence in in that player over. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, obviously they have what that is too, though, Brent. That's confidence in that play that tells you they work on that nonstop. He basically saying, "I'm giving you three chances to get him over. Let's get it done." Dylan Carey batting here as the only hit so far against hits. Slider got the best of him there. It's nothing in one. Go back to the Cornhuskers' loss to Texas Tech. Yesterday, the biggest issue at the plate, not coming through with runners in scoring position, one for 12 against the Red Raiders. Carey. Able to check his swing that time. As you saw, hit come back once again with a breaking ball. He did. He's throwing that, you know, the first time around now, he went a lot of fastballs in on him. So he's throwing that breaker, Brent, on the same line, that inside fastball line. And that's why you'll see those guys start to check their swing when they recognize, sometimes too late, that it's a breaker as opposed to a fastball. And again, on the appeal, Scott Williams says he checks his swing. So far, it's gone slider, slider, sinker from hit. That ball ripped foul. Count even two and two to carry. He's a good looking hitter. I mean, he stands in there with such a presence. I and mean, obviously, if you're hitting in the three hole of Nebraska's lineup, you're a good hitter, but he just. Stands in there in a wide stance, not a whole lot of frills to it, not a whole lot of movement to it, just normally direct to the baseball. Bat stays in the zone a long time. Lays off the breaking ball that time. Fills the count three and two. And, and Brand with a base open right now, it wouldn't shock me if he goes to some off speed or something in on him off the plate, getting him to, to try to get him to chase and swing. Because even if you walk him, you still get a chance for a double play with the next guy as well. A little cat and mouse game there between hit and Brumbaugh at second. Brumbaugh, good speed off the bag at second base. Full count from hit. Struck him out. Came back with a breaking ball. Two outs. Yeah. Again, this is at 
There's a big pitch right here with the base open. You know there's an opportunity. He could go to his breaker change up. He's been throwing those fastballs in. Throws that inside fastball, inside line uh, breaker right here off the inside fastball and just got that barrel going. It's hard to lay off as a hitter. It is. You see recognized fastball in. It's your first rotation in your mind, and you're trying to pull that thing to the left side. Wasn't able to lay off of it. It's a also, great pitch. Also thought it was a good pick by Carmichael behind the plate. That breaking ball kind of hit the dirt. With his ability to pick it, that keeps Brumbaugh at second. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it, look, these if you're gonna if you're gonna throw power breakers, your catchers are gonna go to his knees often, and that's why the value of, of having a great catcher is so important. Those pitchers have got to know in those situations they can bury those breakers into the dirt. Karen goes around. Doug Williams doesn't need the appeal that time. Quickly, nothing and two to Karen. Nebraska trying to bring Brumbaugh home. Had the leadoff walk. Two outs later, he's stuck at second. Nebraska does have seven two-out hits so far over the course of the weekend. 0-2. Got him. Back-to-back -back punch shots. James hit. And able to navigate around the leadoff walk to Caden Brumbaugh. James Sitt has piled up seven strikeouts in his opening weekend start. Searching for a new Hyundai? The search is over at Hampton Hyundai. Right now you can lease a 2024 Hyundai Elantra for $270 per month. Or lease a 2024 Hyundai Palisade for $463 per month. Or check out a 2024 Hyundai Tucson. Lease for $343 per month. Look no further. Visit us today, Hampton Hyundai. Today's coaches interview is brought to you by Shriners Children's the Most Amazing Care Anywhere. We're now joined by Oklahoma head coach Skip Johnson. And coach, I want to talk to you about James Hit, three innings, seven strikeouts. What do you make about the way that James Hit has pitched so far today? He's just try he's just fighting through it and, and uh, just making quality pitches when he has to. That's the biggest thing. Hey Skip, Todd, at last night's game was a, a classic game, I said, between two unbelievable teams. Great power both teams, but great pitching. And then you guys got to, you know, in late last night, a lot of emotion, and then you got to get up early this morning and get it going again as a coach for you. Are you concerned about that, or what do you tell your team in that situation? Yeah, you, you're always concerned about the health of your team, no doubt about that. But, you know, that's what the plan is. You can't look at it. You can't feel sorry for yourself because the game wants you to feel sorry for yourself. You just got to keep grinding it out and, and uh, go pitch to pitch. Coach, what do you like the most about your team coming into this season? I think the the tenacity and the fire and what they go, how they go about their business. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Best of luck the rest of the game. Thank you, guys. Thank for what you do. You got it. That again, Skip Johnson, seventh year at Oklahoma, and his Sooners have split the first two games in Arlington, looking for a winning weekend as they bat here in the bottom of the third, trailing two nothing. Skip Johnson was the pitching coach of Texas for 10 years for Augie Garrido. Came over to Norman in 2017. First year was an assistant, took over as head coach the following year. And Ty, you know this too, just a huge junior college background, 13 years as a head coach at one of the great JUCOs in Texas, Navarro. Yeah, I mean, look, he's a he's a tremendous head coach, and, and, it, and it gets his reputation is being such a tremendous pitching coach and teacher. He's an unbelievable mind in the game of baseball itself. I mean, go, you got to sit with him in a game and, and watch a big league game. And then he and I would come in, in Arlington and watch games. And just to hear him, you know, analyze the game and what goes on. He's a tremendous teacher. He's a great motivator. 
but his knowledge of the game is, has always been great. And now that he's gotten, you know, I don't use this word, he's gotten a little bit older, he gains so much more experience and he's able to just to, to initiate it out to his players. And, well, and, and you're seeing it. But, you know, they were a game away from a national championship two years ago. When Ty talking to you earlier, I thought that as the years go by, coaches get younger. We do get younger, but our minds get more experienced. Don't oh, forget that, right? I mean, it's – I look, they, I told you the other night when you, if they showed a camera shot of him, you could look into his eyes. There's so many pitches in those eyes and in that brain that have seen so many great things. And, and he's, he evolves with the game too, by the way. He understands the analytics and, and, and that, everything that goes along with it. The Sooners have some players with good baseball names. Jason Walk walked to lead off the inning. And uh, hitting third of the order again, Easton Carmichael. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of kids this age and even a little bit younger. The name Easton that all came through, you know, when Easton on the bat part of it. And I guess in the future we'll see some guys named Marucci and Louisville and says, okay, I'm. That probably doesn't fit. Yeah, it does fit. Eh? That works. Yeah, it does. Speaking of equipment, again, one of the big things that came from last night in that marathon game between Tennessee and OU was what happened before the triple play. As that slice foul by Spikerman. So Chris Stamos, the pitcher for Tennessee, had come into the game, was wearing his gray and kind of orange glove and was told to change it. Had to change gloves to... One they had in the dugout, a blue glove, and then right away forces that triple play for Tennessee. Yeah, and, and so there's there's rules in the book about the colors of glove for pitchers and whether it, you know, deflects the sight for the hitters. And, you know, the, you know, and look, the, the umpires are given rules, and you get a chance, you can see Framers out there with him and, and talking to him about the color. And, it, you know, it's kind of grayish, and so, you know, does that create some kind of, you know, optical, I'm not sure, illusion, delusion for the hitters, and, and you know, they're given a list, as you can see, that's a good-looking pitch right there. You, they're given a list of rules that they're supposed to follow, and, and he thought that that's what that was, and and then as you, after, you, after he made the catch, you can see the teammates were all pointing at the new glove that was out yep. there for the play, and... And that, hey, that's college base. That's fun. I got to be honest with you. I mean, it just gives you a little something extra to the game, and it goes along with it. You know, John Bramer was the one that had Chris Damos change his equipment from that gray and orange glove to a blue one. After the strikeout of Spiker, but he's over two with a couple of punch outs. The only strikeout victim Caleb Clark has had today. Here's Bryce Madrin batting for the second time for OU. Just one for ten so far in the tournament. And that slider is in there for a strike. Madrin preseason at all Big 12 Conference. The Sooners top power hitter last year swings and misses another slider 0-2. Both pitchers are throwing power breakers right now. And you're wondering, if you're sitting at home wondering, why, why are they swinging at that? Well, you go get in the box, you put your spikes in between those white lines and see where that breaker starts, and then how far it breaks away from you. It is a hard, tough breaker. Got him again with Caleb Clark. A healthy dose of the breaking ball against Madrin. Back-to-back strikeouts, and that was two down. Those breakers, watch, Brent, watch this right here. Those breakers start in the hitting area. So as a hitter, they're starting right where you think it's a strike, and then you just can't stop the barrel. You can see the frustration with him, but it just tells you how good and how hard those breakers are. Here's Easton Carmichael doubled off of Clark in the first inning. Walk really wants to try to steal second base or find some way to get to second base. Ball in dirt, steal. 
almost had a chance to get out right there. That yeah. ball went to the dirt. He, he, he had a late read on it. Sometimes when the ball goes right out in front of the catcher, it's hard on the runner because he thinks he can take one step and grab it, and he's right in line to throw to second base at that point. They really want the ball to go diff different, different directions to the sides. Change up that time, Clark. This offense lost one of his top hitters from a year ago, Dakota Harris. Led the Sooners in batting average this past season. Lineup held scoreless so far today. Put up two runs against Oregon on Friday, five against Tennessee last night. Catches the inner half of the play with a fastball. A well, heavy dose of the off-speed of the breaker pumps in the heater. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, that's tough. That is a tough pitch. A lot of breakers and change-ups away, and then he comes in with that 90-plus right underneath you. Be curious to see right here if he goes back to that inline breaker off that fastball that he just threw in. He's set up for it. That ball hit sharply on the ground. Going to get through for a base hit. Walk on his way to third. Going to stop there. Carmichael, another two-out hit. Two on, two out for the Sooners here in the third. Oh, it's a great job of, of hitting right there. Breaker in again. Didn't quite have the same depth as the one he's thrown before. He's able to get his hands inside this ball, drive it back up the middle, just out of the reach of the short stuck here. And then I tell you what, Silva makes a good play because it, it when he first came up, he wanted to try to throw that ball to third base, but didn't held up, threw the ball to second to keep the batter runner Carmichael from going to second base. And now Clark facing Michael Snyder. Walk at third, Carmichael at first. Two outs in the third inning. Snyder one for seven so far in the tournament for an Oklahoma team. Again, playing in his final year in the Big 12. This time next year will be in the SEC. Recently announced, by the way, that OU's permanent opponents in the SEC, each team allotted two of those permanent opponents. One of them, no surprise, Texas. The other, Missouri. I mean, look at, I guess geographically it needs to make sense, and then rivalry-wise, it's got to make sense for everybody. I mean, I... You know, everybody's a rival <laughs> when you get to that league, it seems like. And That ball ripped to left, and it is a foul ball. Just foul. There's not a whole lot of space down those lines. That ball had to be just just barely foul. I'll tell you what, that was a good swing. And he, he know, he's, we get a chance to see this. Oh, you talking about just getting the barrel inside that baseball and driving it full side. Can't be by, yeah, it wasn't by much. We get a chance today. I'd, I'd, I'd like for you to go back through the dimensions of this field again, and your research on that was impressive. Oh, sure, way, and yeah. Everything that it meant and, and why, you know, the, the history of the Rangers and, and, the, and, and their part of it, and them to think of it. Yeah. I mean, it's a great idea for other franchises moving forward. That hits him. And so Snyder's going to head to first base. Walk was on his way home with a hit batter. Ball is dead. And so that'll load him up for Rocco Garza Gangora. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if they start to kind of get their bullpen shaking a little bit. A minute ago, they're. They're one strike away with a runner on first, right? Just how crazy everybody thinks baseball's slow, but it, it's fast and it can happen in a hurry. Now all of a sudden you look up, you've got bases loaded. And that throw hit the back of Carmichael. Walk's going to come home and score, and the Sooners are on the board. It's a blind pick to second base, and the pitcher gets up on the mound. There's no sign. Catcher drops his glove. It's an old play where the shortstop comes in behind the runner. As soon as he gets to second base, and he tries to pick, and in the meantime, the, the, watch this. He sees it. It's a blind pick. Gets in the way of it. Hits him on the back. Ricochets and allows Walk to come in and score. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a great play that's used often when a guy gets to second base without a whole lot of signs, anything going on. 
He was just able to slide in between it, Ricky Shelton back, and a run scored. And now Nebraska is sending an army of players into the bullpen. Pitch count for Clark is up to 61. He's in trouble here in the third. Yes. Rob Childers is out there on the mound now, and that Nebraska bullpen about to get stirring in a big way. You guys described it just right. It looked like a whole a whole staff ran out to the bullpen. Everybody that's available for relief today yeah. made their way out there. Maybe even a couple extra that aren't ready for relief just wanted to go out there and hang out. Garza Gangor already has a hit today. And now three hits over the weekend. Two on, two out. And the tying run at second. Came back with a slider at the knees for a strike. And getting back to the SEC talk, we spoke to Skip Johnson early in the week. Symbol, yes, he's extremely excited about getting started in the SEC next year. He has really cherished all of his years in the Big 12. Between his time at Texas as an assistant and, of course, here at Oklahoma. He can go deeper in that. When he was a junior college coach, he had so many players that were playing all over the, the Big 12 then as well. I mean, I, I, he had a, a ton of them. And so his history with the Big 12 is is deep. It's, it's rich. He, he, you know, he loves it. He loves it every piece about it, but it's like anything else in life. It starts to move forward and moving into a new conference. They've got some facility upgrades coming now as well. And so I read some about that. Skip talked about how excited they are. And I tell you what, it, it's an arms race in college baseball, and I'm glad. It just makes our sport even that much better. Well, the depth in that conference is just off the charts good. Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, the running national champion, Florida, Vanderbilt. The list goes on and on. There are no off weekends in the SEC. They played the plate made by Karen, holding to the runners at first and second. Well, there is no weekends off. I mean, that's just, you know, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you had, got, you had teams that weren't making the SEC tournament that were going to make regionals. I mean, it's just, there is no weekend off. Long inning for Clark. Garza Gangora, the sixth batter of the inning. And checks a swing on the appeal to Mike Morris at third. He's going to load him up again. That's a great at bat and a great take. Uh, look, he that's a slider away. Got runners in scoring position. They're on the move. You feel aggressive as a hitter. And for, for him to hold back right there and take that slider away, that's an impressive at bat. Here's Kendall Pettis, and that's going to lead to a change for the Sooners. Yeah, Brand, I felt like that if he didn't get the left-handed hitter, if he didn't get him out, I think they were trying to get him one more hitter, see the left-left matchup, and since that didn't, he didn't get him out, I, I felt like they might make a change. Well, that's it for Caleb Clark as Rob Childress takes the ball from him. New pitcher coming in for Nebraska. It's Tucker Timmerman. So the Cornhuskers looking to get out of a jam and trying to keep this lead intact. Base is loaded. Still on top, two to one here in the bottom of the third. college baseball in the country today and this broadcast is brought to you by Kubota you need equipment with more reliability and versatility built in like Kubota BX and L series compact tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience 
and Shriners Children's. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up with a participating university for the Shriners Children's College Showdown Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to ShrinersShowdown.com to donate in honor of your favorite team today. We are back at Globe Life Field, and Oklahoma is threatening one run already in in this half inning. The bases are juiced, two outs, as Will Bolt has gone to the bullpen for the first time, taking out Caleb Clark for reliever Tucker Timmerman, a freshman for the Cornhuskers and a player that Coach Bolt believes will be a Friday night starter in the very near future. He pitched in the win against Baylor on Friday, got the win against the Bears, inning at two-thirds. There you see his line. No runs given up, only two hits. What was a 4-1 win for Nebraska. And he, he, and he takes over now tied a very tough situation. Oh, it is a tough situation. Uh, and, you know, for a freshman, it's, you know, you wouldn't ex sometimes you wouldn't expect. This is how much they trust him and believe in him to put him in a situation where the base is loaded because you've got to come in and execute strikes. I'd be curious to watch right here if OU is sitting, you know, a red right here, ready to swing right off the bat. And they are. And the answer's part of it. They know he's going to throw a strike, and they know they try, are trying to throw a strike and get aggressive in that moment. Just went around the horn with the runners on base. Carmichael, Snyder, Garza Gungora, third to first. Pettis. Looks at the ball inside. Kendall Pettis, a great play in the outfield last night of the win over Tennessee. Senior out of Chicago. Coming off a really good year last year for the Sooners. One ball, two strikes. Oh, 91 mile an hour fastball right there running in on Pettis. Just tying that barrel up. It's hard to get extended on that when that thing just keeps boring in on you. Yeah, the best numbers of his career last year for Oklahoma. Here Pettis strikes out of the sinker. Timmerman out of the pen, out of a jam. The Sooners leave them loaded. Nebraska goes to the bullpen. Tucker Timmerman comes through. At the end of three, Cornhuskers two, Sooners one. You're watching the Shriners Children's College Showdown on Flow Sports. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down. Most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. You're so much more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a groundskeeper, and a landscaper. That's why you need versatile, durable Kubota equipment. The American Western Weekend. Two nights of Western sports and live entertainment. Deep in the heart of Texas. March 8th and 9th, Globe Life Field. Friday night, the American Performance Horseman with a concert by Luke Bryan. Saturday night, the American Rodeo with a concert by Post Malone. The American Western Weekend, March 8th and 9th. Tickets on sale at AmericanRodeo.com. Again, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a 10-win improvement from a season ago. After winning just 23 games in 2022. And you see the home runs, a program record, although talking to Coach Will Bolt, this year's team won't be as reliant on the home run this year. Should have less swing and miss stuff and will run a lot more this season. Talked about the improvement from the year prior. The Huskers finished fourth in the Big Ten last year after finishing eighth in 2022. Sometimes as a coach, you, the year before, if you struck out a lot, but you hit a lot of homers, you say, okay, we're going to go out and recruit some guys who don't strike out as much and maybe not as power. Then we move our offense to a faster offense, uh, per se, and 
And then sometimes it, what fits your philosophy, and then, you know, if you go out and you're hunting a shortstop, and then all of a sudden you look up, your shortstop's got power, too. I mean, it's so, I don't, you know, sometimes it's by design, sometimes it's by fate, and, and sometimes the game dictates, you know, the types of teams you want to go try and get, and your ballpark, by the way. Tyler Stone leading off the fourth inning here for Nebraska, facing James Hitt, his fourth inning of work. Seven strikeouts so far for Hitt. And the two runs not earned against Hitt. Again, it was a critical throwing error by Easton Carmichael. Runners on base, and Hitt struck out Stone in the first inning in Oklahoma thought it would end the frame, but the errant throw to first base to secure the strikeout was wide of the target, and Nebraska scored twice off that play. Well, it's a tough play. I mean, uh, the, the game's, you know, securing and taking care of the baseball is it's not as easy as it always looks, and things like that happen in any level, not just college. It happens in the big leagues as well. It's unfortunate at, at times, but it's part of the game. And Stone hits that one deep into the second base hole. And Lane able to make the throw in time. One up, one down. Stone is 0 for 2. Going to bring up game Swanson for Nebraska here in the fourth inning. I'll tell you what's impressive, though. Carmichael was involved in that throw. Young man's got two hits. Go back with a doubles next time up that next half. Yeah, doubled, and he's got a single, and... And he's, that's what's what you want to see. He's competitive. All right, I made a mistake. You know what? I'm going to get back in the box and do my part offensively. Our coaches talk about it all the time. It's worth echoing. This is a game of failure, right? The ones who are Hall of Famers, the big league level, fail 70% of the time at the plate. It's all about overcoming adversity. Overcoming and adjusting to it. I mean, and you know, look, it, it happens and being able to move on to the next moment. Don't carry it with you. And he certainly has not. He's done an unbelievable job. Of hitting after that, defending the base, gone to his knees a couple times and blocked some balls with two strikes to tag the runner out and not let the runners advance. I mean, he's, and look, let me tell you what, that's an above average uh, breaking ball he's having to block tonight or this afternoon. Gabe Swanson has struck out once already. Behind, nothing and two. Able to lay off a good two strike pitch there on the slider. Swanson, second team all Big Ten a season ago for Nebraska. One of four Cornhuskers earning all Big Ten honors. Hit 18 home runs last year for Nebraska. Here he strikes out. Number eight for hit. Got him with a changeup. Two down. Well, just a good looking pitch. We get a look at it right here, Brad. Does a little change up kind of out over the plate just a little bit. Sinks, just watch it just sink right underneath that barrel. He does a good job of attacking. We've seen more breakers than we've seen change up. Sometimes when you get second and third times through the lineup, pitchers will start to adjust to you. They don't want you to stay in the, or they won't stay in the same pattern with you. Pitch count at 59 for hit. This is there to Clay Bradford. One ball, no strikes. I tell you what, I would. It's tough being an umpire anyway. These catchers are so good at dragging those balls back into the strike zone. They get underneath them so well now that, that the catching's changed. They get. They can look at them. They're back down on that knee right there, and they're able to get that glove underneath it and drag it in there. And it, it makes the fans feel like, wait, that was a strike. You know, yeah. I mean, it's off the plate and. Well, that catching part of the game has changed in the last five years. Those guys have gotten so good at it. One ball, one strike to Bradford. And Ty, I think you know the Bradford family pretty well. His older brother, Kyle, played for you. Yeah, well, I, when I was going through the roster, I thought that's what that was. And which Kyle was a great pitcher for us, one of my all-time favorites. Did a great job. It's a great baseball family, an unreal family. And I and look, he's I've had a chance to kind of follow him some too. And you can look at swing right there as well, but his older brother Kyle did pitch for us. Now he's a professional golfer, I think. Every time I look up, he's playing golf. Bradford was a Division II player this time last year at St. Mary's in San Antonio. I saw him when he was a lot younger. He wasn't as physical as he is right now. He's done a good job in the weight room, getting stronger. 
game's important to him. So he puts in the work. Of course, Nebraska's always going to have a great training program and, and uh, weight trainers. And, I mean, you can see the physicalness of him now. Hit over 400 last year at the Division II level. Looking to get on base in the fourth inning against James Hitt. He's been dynamite so far for the Sooners. Strikeout number nine. James Hitt has retired five in a row. And carves up Nebraska in the fourth inning. We head to the bottom of the frame at a 2-1 game. You're so much more than just a landowner. You're a gardener. A groundskeeper. And a landscaper. That's why you need versatile, durable Kubota equipment. Three bands. One stadium. Jeff Leverd. Journey. The Steve Miller Band. Together. Three rock and roll Hall of Fame icons. Their biggest hit. August 12th. Globe Life Field. Tickets on sale now at Def Leppard Journey 2024.com. Sometimes you just need a little wonderful in your life. So why not go to a place made for it? Arlington, Texas. It's a city made for fun and excitement and all the things you love to do. And even some things you didn't know you loved until you came here and found them. See for yourself why Arlington is a world of wonderful. Again, James Hitt has been dynamite so far for Oklahoma through four innings, nine strikeouts this afternoon for OU. Ty's stuff has been electric. His stuff has been electric. It's been pinpoint. That thing right there, that breaker right there, as you've seen it over and over again, is a power breaker. But even with a strikeout, one of his punch shots early in the game, there was a mistake by Easton Carmichael. A throw sailing wide of Garza Gangora at first base allowed two runs to score. For the only offense for Nebraska today against it, but enough to take a 2-1 lead into the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, he did what was right because he reached for it the first time and missed it, Brent. And he went back to get it and make sure he took his time and got it. And I think he slowed everything down so much. The elbow just got under the ball and it flew over the first baseman's head. This is the second inning of work now for Tucker Timberman. Braxton Ode is a new pitcher for Nebraska. Big in part, Timberman came in for the one out, a huge one. The third, a strikeout with the bases loaded. And now into the game for Nebraska is Drew Christo. So the third different pitcher Will Bolt is used here today. Well, what you saw was a great veteran move. Rob Childers bringing tournament that he threw on Friday, right? Inning and third, so you don't want to overexpose anybody this time of year. Knew that it was a bases loaded situation. Felt it with a right right matchup to run that two seamer in on the right handed hitter and was able to do it. Got him out of a jam. Had a lot of confidence in that freshman in that moment. Christo, a big presence on the mound. 6'5, 235 pound right hander from Elkhorn, Nebraska. 11 appearances for the Huskers a year ago. Good numbers, 3.24 ERA. A little more than 16 innings of work. Nothing in one to Jackson Willits. One ball, one strike. Grant that little break and Doug Williams behind home plate was telling the, the hitter on deck from OU just to move. He was too far back towards home plate. And when that happens, they want those guys to get back on the on deck safety first. And the second piece of it is they don't want it to be able to see the pitches like it closer to home plate. Swing and a miss. Fastball with some sinking action there from Christo, who's making his debut. 2024 season. Will it's able to lay off? Cap full, three balls and two strikes. Pressure 
freshman hitter. Jack Nice out of the way and takes the leadoff walk. Second walk, Willits is drawn. And the leadoff runner is on for the Sooners for the second time. Well, everybody loves offensively to have their leadoff guy on. You know, this is kind of a, when you're not a home run-esque type team, where OU likes to run the bases and create chaos. Well, what you want on the bottom third of your lineup right now is a walk, and now let's see if they start to change and move their offense. Yeah, whether they try to bunt, hit and run, sometimes in a bunt situation like that, Brent, if they don't get a bunt down or it's a ball, don't be shocked if on the next pitch you see them go to a hit and run. Something to try to put the game in motion. You brought up the home run in Oklahoma, not a huge part of their offense. Only Baylor hit fewer homers in the Big 12 a year ago, and the Sooners have not hit a home run this weekend. On the ground, a third, overbeak to second, and the relay back to first for a 5 4 3 double play. Overbeak, Brumbaugh Stone, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Man, what a play by Overbeak. Watch this. He's in tight because of the bunt, right? Look at him on inside the edge crash, backhand, set that right foot down, perfect feed to the second baseman on the first base. That is a beautiful double play. Base is empty now for Jason Waugh. Drew Christo just got a huge play from his defense. But that is his second double play of the tournament turned by Nebraska. One, two. Jason Walk, true freshman batter here for the Sooners from Ackworth, Georgia. And getting his first career start here this morning. Struck out looking. So Drew Christo gives up a walk, but got a double play ball and ends inning with a strikeout. We head to the fifth inning. We're through four in Arlington. Nebraska with a 1-1 lead over Oklahoma. history of greatness. The real challenge starts after the finish line. When victory alone isn't enough, you keep dreaming and go beyond what's possible. The new 2024 Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Part of our most rugged lineup yet. A few years ago, I attended a conference. The idea was that hydrogen could be transported as ammonia and converted on site into hydrogen. This could solve the problem of transporting hydrogen. We order a tank of ammonia and we start flowing ammonia into our fuel side of our cell and put electricity in and sure enough, out comes pure hydrogen. We solved one of the key problems of the hydrogen economy. And welcome back to Globe Life Field. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Nebraska clinging to a 2-1 lead over Oklahoma. These two former conference rivals have been meeting for the first time since 2011. And batting here for the Huskers, Cole Evans to start off the top of the fifth. 
It is the fifth inning of work for James Sid, who has been electric so far for OU. Four innings, nine strikeouts. The starter that the Huskers faced to open the tournament Friday against Baylor, Marcus Marriott, had 10 strikeouts. And that was a game Nebraska won. It came up with some offense late to beat the Bears. Now looking to beat another Big 12 team. And Evans fists one to Lane at second base. One out here at the top of the fifth. James Hit has been really sharp today. He's been incredibly aggressive. He's in command of his emotions, his fastball and his breaker, both sides of the plate. I mean, this is, Brandon, he's at 70 or 68, 69 pitches in that area. I know they'd love to get him through this inning. Now, whether they would go anymore or not, who knows, but his stuff is still incredibly electric early in a season like this on into the fifth. Out of the plate, Riley Silva. takes a strike spoke about him earlier from Ontario Canada a well-rounded athlete in high school also ran track and played volleyball all district volleyball player just like Ty yeah just like me you know we kid but you were a multi-sport player in high school Ty you actually were offered a scholarship to play both baseball and football I was at Baylor University, which was my mom and dad's alma mater, and I was from Waco and felt like that was what I was going to do. Mickey Sullivan, the head baseball coach at Baylor at the time, and my dad had, had coached together at Baylor in, in, in football and in baseball a long time ago, and it was where I was headed to go. And then, you know, to my great fortune, and you know, not that it wouldn't, that my experience at Baylor would have been unbelievable because I saw what it did for my family, my mom and dad. I mean, I, again, it, it was unreal, and it's a great place to grow up. But an opportunity came to me to go to Austin, to go to University of Texas at the time. You know, they were going to Omaha every year, and, and uh, I'm glad it did. It was a great experience for me to play for Coach Gus as well. Silva shoots that up the middle for a base hit. Just the second hit of the afternoon for Nebraska. Runner on for the Huskers now with one out of the fifth inning as Nebraska will now flip the lineup card and back to Kate Brumball. Brent, that is a great piece of hitting. If you're getting that kind of hitting out of the bottom of your order, that is impressive. This ball's a fastball down. Watch him go down. Watch the flexibility in his lower half to get down there and get after that ball and stay on that ball and drive it back through the middle. That's a left-left matchup with an electric fastball. That's a great at-bat by Silva. Pitch count for James hit up to 72 as he faces Brumbaugh for a third time. Swing and a miss. Ahead of that changeup, nothing in one. Son of a baseball player, his dad Cliff, played college baseball at Delaware and later time of the big leagues here in Arlington with the Rangers and also the Rockies. Rum ball with a fly ball to right field. Madrin near the line, not going to get there. Goes off his glove as well. That's going to give the Huskers 90 more feet on two bases. Rum ball to second, Silva to third, and the Huskers are threatening here in the fifth inning. Well, it's a great job of fighting that ball in. It was kind of in on him a little bit, Brent. He's able to get the barrel inside of it, fight it off to right field. Didn't kill this ball, didn't smash it, but placed it perfectly. Watch, he gets inside, pushes it out to right field. Right fielder, manager has got a long ways to come, can't get to it. Then the ball hits it at ground or hits the turf and kind of spins away from him. And really aggressive, observant base running by the Huskers to move up two bases on it. First double of the year for Brumbaugh, third for Nebraska this weekend. You saw him hesitate right there on that replay and look over, saw it got away from him, got his feet back underneath him and advanced 90 feet to second. Now Overbeek, who helped turn that big double play in the bottom of the fourth inning, bows it off. Seeing a lot of swings here, confident swings right now for Nebraska. Yeah, you are. That's a great pitch right there. It's back to back to each of the last two hitters that he's gone first pitch changeup. He was using that breaker early. Now he's gone to that changeup, particularly in RBI situations right now, trying to get a swing miss or, or a late ground off to the pitcher. When I say late, meaning off the end of the bat. Yeah. 
can't check his swing. That's a strike. 0-2. Four hits so far for Overbeek in the tournament. That's a walk today and a run. A chance here with runners, second and third. One out. Hit. This is low. Trying to get Overbeek the chase, but wouldn't give in to the changeup. Well, he did, and I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to go back in with that breaker, but as a hitter right now, for Overbeek, you're trying to do everything you can to roll this. The worst case scenario is roll the ball in the middle of the field to the shortstop or second baseman to get that guy 90 feet in from third base or a fly ball to the outfield. Nebraska so far today, 0 for 5. Runners in scoring position, so you go back to yesterday against Texas Tech. One for the last 17. Trying to build on a one-run lead. Able to check a swing. Ball in the dirt. So you see he get ahead 0-2. Trying to attack Overbeek low, but doesn't give in. Well, they tried to get him to chase three times, and he hasn't chased. Now, this is the fun part. You know, 3-2 count, base open. Does he go back to the breaker in, which is what he tried to do right then to get him to swing over the top or swing miss? Because you do have a base open. So this is going to be, I'm kind of curious to see how he's going to attack him right here. Full count. That ball hits towards left, and that's through for a base hit for Nebraska. Overbeek comes through, and the Huskers score twice. Two-run single, Joshua Overbeek. Huskers leading 4-1. to one. Well, that's a big-time at-bat for the Huskers right there. Doesn't chase Brand for those two pitches that he threw down in dirt early in the game. Those guys have been chasing that breaker. Third time through the lineup, you start to recognize it a little bit better. Laid off of them, got a change-up, and was able to stay in the change-up. Was up in the strike zone and able to pull it to the left side. It's a great at bat. So James Hit has given up three straight hits. Singles to Silva and over being sandwiched around the double from Brumbaugh. Two runs are in. Third time through this order, and Nebraska looking a little bit more comfortable against James Hit. That will get the Sooners bullpen moving. Part of the order batting now for Nebraska, looking for more. This is Dylan Carey. Two runs already in. You know, he got a quick out early with a ground ball to second base. And Silva's at bat to me was huge and instrumental in, in turning this inning around for the Huskers. For him taking one down there and getting that fastball down and driving that thing back up the middle, kind of get the momentum going for the Huskers. On the ground, rolls out towards third. It stays fair. Snyder with the long throw. It does move over big to second base, but a good play at third by Snyder for the second out. Well, you're right, Brad. That was a great play by Snyder. Slow roller. It's always tough because it creates a different throwing angle for you from the third baseman throwing back across your body a little bit. He made it look really, made that, that play's not easy, and he made it look easy. We're going to bring up Josh Karen. It's 0 for 2. Look at this play at third from Snyder. Charges in at a ball that was close to bouncing foul. And got him by a step. Playing infield, you better learn how to throw and run. That's, that's how you do it right there. And again, a first pitch changeup. Swing and a miss by Karen. Big opportunity here for Nebraska this weekend to go 2 and 1 with a couple of wins over the Big 12. Talking to Coach Will Bolt said it was not conference play, specifically midweek games, that he felt cost Nebraska a chance at an at-large. Didn't play well enough. Up the middle, that's through for a base hit. Overbeek around third. 5-1, Nebraska. Well, he does a great job sliding his hands inside just gets the barrel in there just enough brand to try that and he's strong enough physical enough watch his swing on top of the plate a little bit slides his hands in there and squeezes the barrel in there and throws that ball right back through the middle for a base hit rbi through the first four innings of this game nebraska had one hit they got four in the fifth 
And again, seeing hit a third time through. Seventh batter of the inning coming up, Tyler Stone. And that's out of play. I think this would be the last hitter probably for a hit either way. I think they're staying with him with a left-left matchup right here with two outs. If he doesn't get him, I feel like they're going to make a move. And even if he does get him, I think going, for sure going out in the next half inning, they would make a move. Breaking ball right down the heart of the plate. Strike two to Stone. Three runs in for Nebraska here in the top of the fifth inning. First of three games today. Coming up next, Oregon against Texas Tech. Ducks undefeated so far this weekend. Heck, we got baseball here the next two weekends in tournaments. Next week, the Kubota College Series, yes, continues. Arkansas, Oregon State, Oklahoma State, Michigan. The weekend after that, TCU, Texas A&M, USC, Arizona State. Swing and a miss. Stone strikes out. Throw goes into center field, but it doesn't matter. As Carmichael caught the pitch. A strikeout for him, his 10th. But the Sooners score three times in the top of the fifth inning. On top, 5-1 to one over Oklahoma. University of Nebraska today to introduce Poppy to the Husker baseball team. This gives us an opportunity to show the Husker baseball team what they'll be playing for at the Shriner Children's College Showdown. I wanted to introduce you to somebody really special here. Poppy's here with us today. When my daughter Poppy was born, she was born with a limb deficiency and was missing her left arm. Throughout the years, Shriners Children's has helped us and provided care for us and given her the confidence to go through life and advocate for herself. I think they're kind of like family to me. You know, I grew up around them and there are people who are here for me and here to help me. The great thing about Shriners is that they give world-class care regardless of the family's ability to pay. Shriners is a great choice. I think their, their research is beyond a lot of hospitals and a lot of doctors and hospitals get their research from Shriners because of how developed they are. It was clear to see from, from Poppy's interactions with us all today that you know she's had a long-standing relationship with Shriners. I think it's put her in a spot where she's very grateful for Shriners. One thing we're really excited about is having Poppy with us in Arlington for the Shriners Children's College Showdown. The Shriners Children's College Showdown unites athletic excellence to the most amazing care anywhere. Shriners Children's is dedicated to improving the lives of children all around the world. All care is provided regardless of a family's ability to pay. To learn more, visit ShrinersChildrens.org today. We are lucky to be joined in the booth by Poppy, the Shriners Children's hero representing Nebraska honorary team captain. Poppy, thanks for being here. You seem to be a good luck charm for the Cornhuskers. I know you were here on Friday and Nebraska got things going against Baylor. You jumped into our booths just moments ago. This scored three times. Yeah. So th that's, be again, like really exciting for you to not only be this good luck charm, but to be around the team as well. We saw your story a little bit. If you can't tell us more about that in your journey through Shriners. Yeah, so I was born with a limb deficiency in my left arm and around the age of two, I was approached by a local Shriner and he asked if we've heard of Shriners and we said no and that's where everything started. Well, Poppy, um, again, you spent time with the Nebraska baseball team as well. Tell me a little bit more about that experience for you and what you, what you got to know about being around Nebraska baseball. Yeah, they're very welcoming gentlemen and they're overall very nice. So far here this week in Arlington, again, you've been here uh, since the tournament started, you know, on Friday. What have you had a chance to do besides watch some baseball? Yeah, I've gone out and hung out with the team a bit. And we've, you know, they're, as I said earlier, they're very welcoming and they always want me to be a part of things. I know you've got family here with you as well. Tell us you know, who's here with you in Arlington this week. Yeah, so my mom, Amy, is here with me and my dad, Jeremy. I, I got to ask you a question. Now, you, you were a part of the rally the other day. Now, did Coach Bolt look at you a little while ago and tell you to come on up a half inning early while they were hitting so you could get the, 
Nebraska to rally again just a second ago. I, don't, I need to know if, he, if he's got this already planned out because you are definitely their good luck charm so far in this tournament. Yeah, I think it's just a coincidence that it happened. But, hey, if I'm up here now, I'm glad I am. Spikerman gets that under the glove of Carey into center field. Leadoff man is on for Oklahoma here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Spikerman is on for the first time as the top part of the order bats for Oklahoma. And when we saw your video, Poppy, one of the things you said really stood out to me that the people of Shriners have been like family to you. If you can, t tell me a little bit more about your experience with the folks at Shriners. Yeah, Shriners tries to make like the hospital not seem like a hospital, like you're just going in for a checkup. And they try and make you as comfy as possible. And they're really not here to be your doctor. They're here to try and help you. And not only, not only have they been great for you, but for your family as well. You know, getting a chance to know your parents. And, uh, how, what has the connection been like between you know, Shriners and your mom and dad? Yeah. So anytime I have issues, my parents will reach out. And, you know, they respond back very quickly. And they're always here for us. Were you always a big baseball fan, by the way? Yes. Yep. Does that come from your mom or your dad? My dad. Is that right? Yeah. Is he pro baseball-wise? Who, who's your dad rooting for? Yankees. Really? Mm -hmm. There you yep. go. So a New York Yankees fan. Mm -hmm. As we play baseball here in Texas, I don't think they like the Yankees a whole lot. <laughs> oh, <here>. no. <laughs> so did you inherit the – are you a Yankees fan as well? Yes. I'll let you in a little secret. I'm a Texas guy as well, but I, too, am a Yankees fan. So I'm right there with you. You yeah. have a favorite Yankee, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stan. They just got Juan Soto. Um, I don't really have a favorite. I just like the team in general. Now runners first and second now. Madrid reaches. Oklahoma's got something going here in the bottom of the fifth inning, Ty. Well, they're going to have to answer it back. I mean, it, down 5-1. Nebraska just comes off a rally, and not, offensively, and they're not part of the order where they can do that, but offensively, you, you always want to answer back, obviously, to give you a chance to win a game. But even momentum-wise and spirit-wise in your dugout, it's important to have great at-bats, get back in this game. Poppy, you have to ask, have you been in a major league ballpark before? I have not. So this is your first time experiencing this? Yeah. What are, you, what are your thoughts on Globe Life Field and what you've seen? Yeah, it's a great experience to be here, and I'm overall very grateful. Any chance you're going to walk out here wearing a Rangers hat? No. <laughs> <laughs> Easton Carmichael batting here for Oklahoma. It is a 5-1 lead for Nebraska. Got three runs at the top of the inning. OU trying to respond here. Brain Freeman, Ty Harrington. Joined by Poppy, the honorary team captain for Nebraska. Saw that during the game yesterday when the Fort Huskers were playing Texas Tech, you were honored on the field as well. Had a chance to kind of stand there on the field. Uh, to, what, what is it like for you to actually you know, be there field level, have all the fans kind of watching you in your video, playing on the video board? What was that like for you? Yeah, it's very nerve-wracking being out there, but you're supported by the team and the fans, and they... They want you out there. I asked about your favorite player with the Yankees. Let's take things back to Nebraska here for a second. You got to meet the team. Did you? Who, who was your favorite player to meet with the Cornhuskers? You know, I don't really have a favorite player. I'm not a favorite. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they're all great guys, and they've all been here supporting me throughout this. That is the right answer, by the way. Can't play favorites with the guys. <laughs> Ty knows that as a coach. Yeah. I like the way she used the word gentleman. That says a lot. Yep. I mean, it says a lot about Nebraska's players and 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 you as well. And but that's 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 fun to hear. And he began with a single for Spikerman, Madrin to walk. Nobody out here. Drew Christo in some trouble in the fifth. In the air, and that's going to drift foul. Christo, the third pitcher that Will Bolt has used today. Start of the game with Caleb Clark, then to Tucker Timmerman for one out, one huge out, a strikeout with the bases loaded in the third. And now Christo is fouled away. Count remains two and two. I mean, this potentially 
you know, this is a big moment at, at this point. I, Carmichael's been so good at the plate today, and, and so far he's battled off two tough pitches that Christo has thrown at him. And this is a fun at bat and battle. Fouls another one off. Those are tough pitches too, Brad. He's run the ball in on him twice and then away from him. So, Poppy, again, we mentioned you being on the field, you have a chance to be introduced to the crowd, your video playing on the video board, spending time with the team. But you've also now come to the broadcast booth twice. So I have to ask, is this your favorite experience of all or not? I have to say yes. It is. Yes. So, Ty, how about that? Her favorite experience. She says she has to head. say yes. I don't know if it's because you're standing up here with us or is it me? I mean, she says I have to say yes. But keep in mind, when she when she is up here, Nebraska's been playing well. well. No, that's true. That part is very true. Throw back to second and Spikerman's back in. I think she was secretly sent up here by Coach Ball to get a rally going last half inning. Potential for a big in here for Oklahoma. In the air to center field. And drifting over and making the catch Silva. That will be a productive out though. As Spikerman's going to advance to third. Christo fortunate. We're glad to have the first out of the inning. Now, man, at third base, it's going to bring up Michael Snyder. Well, that was just a great at bat. Look, he didn't get a hit out of it. He did advance the lead runner 90 feet into scoring position to third base. But a tough at bat, great battle between the pitcher and the hitter right there. A lot of foul balls, tough pitches, found them off, and then finally a fly ball to center field. So, Poppy, what grade do you win? What's that? What what uh, what grade are you in? Where I'm a freshman. In freshman high school. in high school. Yes. What is it you like to study the most? Um, I'm a big history and English person. History and English. Is there any particular history that you like? Like U.S. Uh, history, world history? Um, I like U.S. U.S. history. I know it's always early to be asking somebody who's only a freshman in high school, but have you thought about you know college potentially and what's next after high school? Um, I haven't thought about colleges personally, but I've thought about jobs. Jobs. What kind of job would you like to, what kind of career field would you like to get into? Um, something in finance or something in the medical field. See, so Ty, for a second, I thought she was going to say broadcast. I was waiting. <laughs> I actually thought she was going to say that as well. And then I actually thought she said, well, I'm just going to go to the University of Nebraska and study <laughs> broadcasting. I do think it's great you say the medical field because of everything that Shriners has done for you. Is that kind of a source of inspiration for you potentially to get into that? Yeah, it is. That's popped up in the infield, and the catch is made by Overbeek. So the Sooners, first two batters of the inning reach. Since then, Christo's gotten two big outs, and now two down to the inning. Well, that's a huge out right there, not being able to get the guy in from third base with less than two outs, 90 feet away. You need a big hit right here for OU to kind of crawl back into this in this moment and not let the moment get away from them where they had the first two guys get on in this inning with nobody out. Trying to keep this poppy streak going. The brass has scored three times to her in the booth at the top of this inning, trying to get out of a jam at the bottom and keep this a four-run lead as Garza Gongora bats and fouls it off for strike one. I have to say, by the way, as somebody who's been to Yankee Stadium before, and your dad's a Yankees fan, and now you are too, you've been here to Arlington, you've got to find your way eventually, you've got to talk to dad about it to get to the Yankee Stadium. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's a base hit for Garza Gungora, able to come through for Oklahoma. A runner is in. Spikerman scores. It's a 5-2 game. Watch this to create that bat in a big moment for OU at that point in time. They had a chance. Nebraska got a chance to get out of there with no run scored. First baseman's having to hold a runner. It wouldn't make any difference. That ball was in the four hole all the way. Scores a run, lead runner all the way to third base as well. So OU keeps their rally alive. Going to bring up Kendall Pettis. Sixth batter of the inning. And runners once again on the corners. Matter to third. Garza can go at first. OU trying to chip away the lead even further. 5-2 Nebraska. And that's in the dirt. Trying to start off Pettis with a breaking ball.
Got a fairly big pitch coming up in this game now. Got a hitter's count with a runner at third. And this 2-0 is all the way to the backstop. That's going to bring in another run. Madrid scores, and just like that, Pettis now represents a tying run. It's 5-3. Tell you, and, and the, you know, the base hit to right field got him to third base, and he just pulls his fastball. He was set up in, pulls it back across the other side of the plate. He's not able to reach over there and keep it from getting to the backstop. That was a 92-plus fastball just pulled on the other side of the plate. Bullpen is active for Nebraska. I wonder if Pettis reaches. Would that be it for Christo? Battle back to 3 0, now 3 2. Look at the Sooners' pin. So far in this game for Oklahoma has belonged to James Hitt, but his pitch count is getting up there. Don't know if we'll see him in the sixth. Full count. Struck him out. So Drew Christo gets a strikeout, but the Sooners score twice in the inning. It is a two run game. Poppy, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Arlington. Thank you so much. All right, thanks again to Poppy to sharing her story from Shriners College. At the end of five, it's 5 3, Nebraska. Today I get to introduce my grandson Wyatt to the Oklahoma Sooner baseball team. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you too. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Wyatt was a patient at Shriners Children's St. Louis. When I was born, I had an extra finger on both hands, an uh, extra thumb right there and uh, an extra thumb right there. And when I was about six months old, I got them surgically removed by Shriners. So he's had four surgeries. 15 visits so far, and we will continue annual visits until he's 18. I've been here for quite some time now, so I've seen, you know, what Trinus Hospital can do for those kids. His first day of kindergarten, he comes home and tells his mom, and said that we toured the library, and he said, Mom, I want to write a book to prove that little kids can do big things and to tell other people it's okay to be different. No different than us. We want to write our story. Every team has a different story. And if he can share that with our team, it's going to make a big impact on our kids. We've helped over 1.6 million kids, and I'm so grateful that my grandson is one of them. Each team with some offense in the fifth inning. Nebraska scores three times. The Sooners score twice. It is a two-run game. This will go to the top of the sixth inning, and a new pitcher in now. For the Sooners, Brad Pruitt, the freshman on the hill for Skip Johnson, trying to keep this a two-run game. Yeah, this whole weekend's been fun, Brad, baseball-wise, and, and the brand of baseball. But, you know, we've had an opportunity to see some really good-looking young pitchers Oh yeah, get out here and, and get their spikes on the mound out there and also out on the field. And, well, just good-looking body, arms, so far, all of them have been able to control their emotions for the most part when they get out there. Sometimes as a coach, you really never know what that's going to look at, which is part of the reason why you want to play such great competition in this type of venue. So this is going to be his opportunity to get out there and get started in Division One baseball as well. OU starter James Hitt finishes five innings, strikes out ten. Gave up five runs, only three of them earned. As Gabe Swanson leads off. The sixth inning here for Nebraska. And facing Brad Pruitt. One ball to no strikes. Pruitt played his high school baseball not too far from here in Arlington at Denton Geyer. The top 20 right handed pitcher out of the state of Texas coming out of high school. This is his debut appearance for OU. Facing Swanson, who struck out twice. And he's behind Swanson, 3-0. One of those moments, first time out there today, get a deep breath. Lock in on the mitt. Walks him on four pitches. 
you fit and tie again you're pitching near the near your hometown got to have friends and family here in a big league ballpark that, that figure that uh, motion's running a little bit high some nerves settling in right now for Pruitt as he walks Swanson on four pitches yeah and I think he's having a little technical with the pitch calling I think with I can see Skip coming out now and there's a lot of different ways that they can get the pitches in and going back to what you said Brent I mean, look there's a lot of you know excitement right and I you know it's amped up a lot of times when you're amped up like that you saw ball four it'll be up in the strike zone not not big misses either by the way but just elevated a little bit which is you know sometimes normal uh, for guys to to be excited and certainly to get out there and so I, I, I think at this point, too, you, you, you know, going down to the bottom third, the lineup, Nebraska, do you, you know, they go to try to create some offense off of him, take a couple pitches until he proves he can throw a strike. Yeah, we just saw Skip Johnson come out to give Brad Pruitt a replacement piece of equipment. Spoke to Coach Johnson about, you know, team culture and, just how important it is to preserve core values within your program. And he's always trying to make his players not just better baseball players, but better men. And he always asks his players, what mark are you going to leave behind? Spoken like a true leader. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody wants to be something. Runner takes off, and no throw from Carmichael. Swanson swipes second base without a throw. Oh, this is just a great jump right here. He he gets good read. Leg up. As soon as a front foot comes up, he's out of there. Carmichael unable to come up with a throw to second. There's a strike on the fastball from Pruitt. 2-2. Two -two. See the arm strength. That's a 90-plus fastball. Two two to Bradford, puts us one in the air to center, pretty well hit, and at the warning track, the catch is made by Spikerman. Boy, that ball hung up for a long time. It will move Swanson over to third base. That's the first out of the inning. Well, he'll get a he'll get a couple handshakes and high fives with a great at bat and advancing that runner 90 feet. That's a good at bat. Good swing on it, middle of the field, drove it to the deep part of the park. You can see it right there. Teammates acknowledging what he just did. Move that runner into 90 feet away from scoring with less than two outs. Now Oklahoma's going to have to, Sooners are going to have to come bring their infield in and try to cut the run off at home plate. All drawn in here for Skip Johnson. First pitch to Cole Evans. Ball one. Again, the ball has hit the deep center. Just shy of the 407 sign in center field. Ty and I had the chance to kind of relay the story for you yesterday, the uniqueness of the dimensions here at Globe Life Field. It's not 400 feet, it is 407, the number seven for Pudge Rodriguez, the former Ranger great. You see the statue outside the ballpark here. A lot of great years in Texas. Later won a World Series with the Florida Marlins. You see the 410 signs just to the left and right of the 407. The number 10 for Michael Young. His jersey retired. Here in Texas, part of those back-to-back -back World Series teams in 2010 and 2011. On the ground, a third. Great backhand by Snyder. Throw to home. The tag. Carmichael. Got him. What a play. I, Brand, I know we're going to get a chance to look at this. It's, this is just a great play with Snyder right here. Ball to his left. Watch this. Backhand ball goes to his knees. He's still got to clear a throwing lane. See Carmichael up towards the mound area to take the throw. See that right there? It creates a throwing lane so you don't throw into the runner. Applies the tag perfectly. Shows the umpire. 
He made it look easy. That was a tough play, tough back end in a big moment for the Sooners. Again, Carmichael had that tough defensive play early in the game that led to two runs. But you said it, Ty, he's come back with some big, some big at-bats, yeah. some big blocks in the dirt, and that was a really nice play at the plate there to get the out. Yeah, that was a great play. Again, started with Snyder, started with a pitch. It was a great pitch, a great sequence of pitches from the freshman to, to brew it, to go out there and make those pitches. He threw the breakers and got ahead in the count. And, you know, again, your defense, the value of defense is so important in any game but it's certainly so important in college baseball because we've seen the other side of it today in today's game as well. Well, that's going to be it for the freshman Brad Pruitt making his debut. Oklahoma going to the bullpen. Coming into the game, Carter Campbell. We're back after this from Arlington on Flow Sports. the second time of this tournament. Skip Johnson is turning to Carter Campbell. Saw him in the opener on Friday against the Ducks. A couple of strikeouts and an inning of work against Oregon. And on the mound now, trying to keep this two-run game with Nebraska on top, 5-3. to three. Moments ago, got a great defensive play from the Sooners. Infield drawn in. And it was OU third baseman Michael Snyder with a bullet to Easton Carmichael cutting off the run at home. Well, it was a great play. Again, the, the fielding part of it first and then creating a throwing lane and, and being able to apply the tag in time to get the runner. And I think what you're seeing Skip do here, Skip Johnson do, the head coach from OU, is he's, he's going to play the, the odds right here and go to the left-left matchup. A little more experience on the mound trying to get in this inning where it is right here and then move on into the bullpen, I, you know, whether it's he's out there for just one hit or a couple hitters, but right now it is about getting Silva out, who had a great at-bat to kind of get things started an inning before. Cable ate up a lot of innings last year for Oklahoma. More than 59 innings of work. Won six games, struck out 39. And finished the year with a 5.61 ERA facing Riley Silva. We got a single back in the fifth. You know, the other outfield dimensions have significance with players whose numbers have been retired here in Texas. That's why you see a 334 sign for Ryan Nolan's number 34. A one, a ball and a strike. Tucked away into the deep part of the left field corner is a 329 sign. That's for Adrian Beltre. That guy didn't have any fun playing. Oh, my gosh. Probably one of the biggest fan favorites in this franchise's history, the Texas Rangers. 
Massive part of those World Series teams, along with Michael Young, Josh Hamilton, Ian Kinsler, really talented team back then. 372 to, to 72 sign, noting the year that the Rangers moved to Arlington. The former Washington Senators moving to Texas in, in the early 70s. You are not dating yourself. You're dating me because uh, I remember a lot of this. You so, were a young 30-year-old yeah. watching Senator Yeah, game. easy now. <laughs> Three balls, one strike to Silva. Give me over strike of the changeup, 3-2. Yeah, now you got a runner going first baseman's going to go play behind the runner at first base to cover up the four hole, give him a little bit more coverage. You can see him stand three, four steps behind him. As soon as a pitcher picks his foot up, he'll move back even a little bit more to try to create a little more coverage with a left-handed hitter up. Top of the order, two up next. Campbell. As that ball hit towards the gap in right center, and that's going to get down for a base hit. And heading over to third base, Cole Evans, he's coming home. Throw to the plate is not in time. 6-3, Nebraska. How about the base running from Cole Evans? Wow, you're talking about flying around the bases. This is practice. This isn't something that you just do in the middle of a game or say, hey, let's try this. This is a practice play by OU. First of all, another unreal at bat by Silva. But watch this right here. Watch him. Look at his base coach. He knows he's going. Once he moved up the line, gave him the green light, he knew he had a chance to score. That is really aggressive and unreal base running by the Huskers. Well, a huge two-out RBI there for Nebraska. Lead back up to three. And back at the top of the order to Caden Brumbaugh, who doubled in his last at-bat. I'll tell you what was even as impressive as that. Silva's at bat number one. Silva, when he hit it, came flying out of the box. He looked like he was going to second base, had to toss the brakes on, and then saw what was going on in front of him with them sending him home, and then he advanced as he's stealing now. Yes, he is, without a throw. Can you spell chaos with an N? Yeah, you can spell it with uh, chaos, but let me tell you what, that young man can run, and if that's what you got at the bottom of your order at nine hole, and then in creating offense and flipping it to the top of your order, that's a good lineup. Was making a reference, obviously, to Oklahoma's yeah, ability I, to run yeah, the bases. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I got excited watching Silver run the bases. I mean, I, I love to watch guys play with such aggression and and instincts. I mean, and now, look, I mean, he's a wild pitch away. Or doesn't even have to get that far off because he's so far off at third base because of the, of the left-handed pitcher and third baseman deep. And, I mean, he's... He creates, I guess you could say, his own chaos. Yep. Which you, see, I, you are fired up. I am. I love to watch guys run the bases. I mean, I, I just, it's so much, it changes the game so much that 90 feet plus and, you know, you can see how extended his lead. He'll, he'll be able to get even more. Anything that just barely gets away from the catcher, he's got a chance. Good block from Carmichael. I'm going to keep Silver at third base. Yeah, he knows it too, and he knows he's got to get down there and work hard, and he's been working hard all game anyway. You know, early in the game, he was having to get those knees off and enough with the breakers from hit, and so he's, both these guys have done a pretty good job, by the way, getting to the knees and blocking balls today. And struck him out looking. But Nebraska coming through with two outs, and as Ty said, with some aggressive and good base running. Riley Silva delivering a two-out single, driving in Cole Evans. It's 6-3 Huskers heading into the bottom of the sixth. You're so much more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a groundskeeper, and a landscaper. That's why you need versatile, durable Kubota equipment. Sometimes you just need a little wonderful in your life. So why not go to a place made for it? Arlington, Texas. Come see for yourself why Arlington is a world of wonderful. Tame Brown in the air tour. 
this Saturday, September 14th, Globe Life Field. Special guests, Cole Swindell, Low Cash, and Ray Lynn. Crossover superstar Kane Brown Live. So thank God I get to On sale now at KaneBrownMusic.com. Presented by AEG Presents. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. A look at the Chuck Morgan plaque and booth here at Globe Life Field. One of the legends in Major League Baseball as a public address announcer. Getting ready for his 46th year in pro baseball. He has announced starting lineups for 3,244 consecutive big league games. He has not missed a home game for Texas or Kansas City since he started in Major League Baseball more than 40 years ago. How impressive was that to look at the memorabilia in there and all the things that he could you imagine if he could just get into that in his eyesight and his brain all the different things that he's done and, and the stories that would come out and I had a chance to be around him he we had a first pitch dinner lead off dinner at, at Texas State and he came in with Nolan Ryan and and did their thing on stage and it was so special and fun but I mean it just think about if you could just get a film to come out of all the things that are in, you know, inside of him, the things he's seen would be so fun. Very synonymous with the phrase, it's baseball time in Texas when the Rangers take the field. And baseball video game fans might recall his voice as well. The PA announcer for Major League Baseball video games for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Well, you've hit the big time when that happens. You're good at what you do when that happens. So, Ty, I have to ask, what is your favorite baseball video game? I knew you were going to ask that. and Something on Atari. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We didn't really have them. Um, I don't know. You know, I've, I've watched our guys and, you know, throughout my coaching career, I would watch our players take them on the road with them, which, you know, as a coach, it's not a bad thing, right? Keeps them from running around and, and you know, gives them – a baseball mindset per se and um but personally i i can say i've never played one before well that is disappointing well yeah but <laughs> you gotta you gotta imagine now i was seeing a lot of baseball going on and it seemed like sometimes in some of the games i was involved with real games it seemed like it was a video game but Willits rolls one to, sh to a second. Brumball makes a play for the first out. Yeah, good pitch and a good job. And, and you couldn't push the stop button in some of the games I was involved with or pause either one. I love how you first said the stop button. <laughs> if there's any indication you don't know video games, that was it right there. Oh, thanks. All right, so back to business here. Cornhuskers leading 6-3. Drew Christo still to mound. Or beg your pardon, actually, Kyle Froelich on the mound now for Nebraska. We've gone from number 25 to number 26. So Froelich, beg your pardon, Kyle Froelich on now. Senior right-hander, another Canadian from Saskatchewan. On the hill here for the Cornhuskers. And facing Isaiah Lane, who fouls that away. A ball and two strikes. Not that unusual to see teams go to multiple and several arms this time of year because everybody's kind of, it's new. They don't want to overexpose them. And then tournament play, it, it th you know, three exciting games. And you know the front end pitchers are at 80 pitches. So you know the back end guys, you're going to try to piece it together. And you got three games that you're trying to piece together. So it's not unusual to see guys go out there for an inning, maybe two, you know, or a guy go get a hitter or something like that this time of year, and particularly like on a Friday night so they can come back on a day like Sunday. 
This, by the way, the debut appearance for Kyle Frelick in a Huskers uniform this time last year at Northwestern State out of the Southland Conference. They had the Demons with 23 appearances in relief a year ago. 2.70 ERA, more than 36 innings of work, and induces a pop-up of Isaiah Lane. And right there is Evans, two outs in the sixth inning. What if I told you that Rob Childress was the assistant at Northwestern State way back in the day, an assistant to Dave Van Horn, who was the head coach at the University of Arkansas. Way back, and, and let me tell you, Northwestern State, Mitch Gaspard came out of there as well. There's been a ton of great coaches that coached at Northwestern State in Louisiana. In Natchitoches, Louisiana. That is correct. Probably one of the most mispronounced college city names you'll ever see because the spelling is nothing like the pronunciation. No, but it is a, a cool little town. I mean, it. Go in there and they have the meat pies in there that are unbelievable oh, yeah. all over the town. I mean, it is a unique little spot. A lot of great baseball players and a lot of great coaches that have come through that program. Jim Wells, who was a head coach at Alabama for a long time, who was in the College Baseball Hall of Fame. Walk, strikes out looking. So in his debut, Kyle Fralick. Retires the Sooners in order. Aims the inning with a strikeout of Jason Walk. We go to the seventh. 6 3, Nebraska, here on Flow Sports. Watch me jump, dive, and splash. Put me by a pool, I'll be soaked in a flash. A girl in the water to swim like a fish. Just two simple legs. That was my wish. I'm a sea turtle, shark, a seal on a slide. This is my day of fun, with nothing to hide. Watch me. Pioneers in orthotic and prosthetic technology at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Protecting what matters most is the mission that matters most. At Lockheed Martin, we know today's threats come from behind, above, and below. And we make sure those who serve stay ahead of them by connecting platforms necessary to dominate every domain across air, land, sea, space, and cyber, using technologies that protect in the same moment they detect. The mission is a safer, more secure world. Our promise is to help make it happen. Nebraska. Nebraska on top, 6-3. Fort Huskers got a big fifth inning. Three runs scoring for Nebraska in the fifth. Got some big base hits. Joshua Overbeek, a two-run single. One of those hits for the Huskers in that frame. And Josh Karen later in the inning delivering an RBI single, part of that three-run fifth. And then in the sixth inning, insurance added from Riley Silva. Driving in Cole Evans, who had tremendous base running, scoring all the way from first base on that two-out single. So we go to the top of the seventh, and Nebraska leading 6-3 over Oklahoma. New pitcher in, meanwhile, for Skip Johnson, Jet Lotus. In now for the Sooners. 26 innings of work last year, and this is first appearance of 2024. Strike one to Josh Overpeak, who starts the seventh inning. That change it misses high. One ball, one strike. You saw the replay of Overbeek's big two-run base hit. He has been on twice in this game. He's also scored twice.
you know, both these teams aggressive on the bases. You know, Oklahoma aggressive steals. And if you've, you've documented a couple of times already in their games this weekend, and their numbers speak for themselves, but. Up the middle, good snag there by Lotus. Throw kind of took Garza Gagor off the bag, but able to stay there enough to get the out and one away here in the seventh. Well, you're going to see this go right back to him. He goes back over, kind of backhands his ball. And at that point, a lot of times coaches want you to kind of run as far as you can and underhand it for that very reason right there. They're not used to always making those throws like infielders. You'll see him overhand this. Take a little off of it, sidearm it just a little bit. Hey, but it's an out. It'll work. There's Dylan Carey. The three-hole hitter here for Nebraska. Game one of a triple header. Red Raiders, Ducks coming up next. The nightcap and the finale to this incredible season opening tournament. Tennessee against Baylor. The only team unbeaten so far is Oregon. Ducks are 2-0. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be a fun game next. That ball is hit in the air to center. Spikerman, well in front of the warning track, has it for out number two. And really the story for the Ducks has been their bullpen. Been nearly untouchable two Ooh. games in. Well, I'm telling you, their bullpen and their defense. And advancing them runners, they're 90. When they get guys on third base so far with less than two outs, or even with two outs, they've been able to get the guys in. But I'm with you, Brand. I think their bullpen quality, and he talked about the depth. Before we even got into this tournament, he talked about they had improved their bullpen depth. Here's Josh Karen. Nobody on, two away. That's ball one, just missed. Nebraska here in Arlington. The Huskers on the road for the first 11 games of the year. Played their first home game March 8th against South Alabama out of the Sunbelt Conference. So saw the Ducks in the building. The Red Raiders here as well coming off their win over Nebraska yesterday. Getting three two-out runs at the top of the ninth <laughs> inning. <laughs> They're having some fun in that. Waiting for between games. You know what's funny about, or not funny, if you've never done this before, you probably can't appreciate it like, I can. Is it what you see him like that off to the side? This got done taking BP. Maybe the pitchers are out over there right now that the hitters might be taking BP and they're they're having a good time cutting up. What's different about baseball players is they can be sitting over there cutting up, watching the game, learning something while they're watching it too about, you know, maybe their opponent or different things, their friends playing on the team. But as soon as this game's over, light switch goes on. Yep. And they change channels in their mind and they get ready for game time. Brought up Nebraska's home opener coming up in a couple of weeks, March 8th. And Nebraska really tough to beat in Lincoln. They haven't had a losing record at home in more than 20 years. They were top 10 in the nation in attendance a season ago, so a lot of great support back home in Lincoln. Some of the fans have traveled here to Arlington. And they've watched Nebraska split their first two games, leading game three. Full count here to Josh Karen, who shoots one up the middle and smacks a base hit in front of Spikerman, and Karen is on for the second time. Well, Nebraska's done such a good job today of hitting the ball in the middle of the field, getting the barrel square to the baseball, hitting it back up the middle, staying on the ball a long time. It's been it's been fun to watch these guys hit. And you were talking about Nebraska a minute ago. I was so interesting last night as I was watching that late game on my phone and there were Nebraska fans sitting behind me and they were interested in watching him. Nebraska fans love Nebraska. It could be football, baseball, all the above. They, they travel well. I mean, it's important to them and you can see it in the attendance today and, and all, you know, all throughout Arlington and all the different restaurants I've, I've eaten at. You, you'll notice there'll be Nebraska fans around. That's what I've noticed, too, about the crowds that have turned out here and you just kind of mill around the city of Arlington this week. You know, the, these, the fans from each of the programs are there to watch their teams first and foremost, but they're baseball fans. They're yeah. coming here to watch all the games. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're fans. Of, that's correct, Brand. That's a great way to put it. And They, they are fans of the baseball. They feel like, hey, if we're going to go down here to this beautiful ballpark, let's 
Let's take it all in. High fly left field. Pettis is back, oh. and he will make the catch going into the wall. Tyler Pettis has been unreal this weekend with his outfield defense able to hold on, crashing into the wall here in Arlington. Wow. And pops right back up. Maybe a play that sparks something in the Sooners. What a catch. Brent, this is going over his head, turns. He knows the fence is coming. He's only playing his part twice. Doesn't know for sure, and then catch it. Bam! What a and catch. on that play, it is time to stretch in Arlington. Oklahoma coming to bat, trailing by three. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Globe Life Field is your home for college baseball with three full weekends of action starting February 16th at the home of the Texas Rangers. It all starts with the Shriners Children's College Showdown presented by Kubota featuring Baylor, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Oregon, Tennessee, and Nebraska. Next is the Kubota College Baseball Series with Arkansas, Oklahoma State, Michigan, and Oregon State in Weekend 2 and TCU, Texas A&M, Arizona State, and USC for Weekend 3. To get tickets and learn more, visit globelifefield.com slash collegebaseball. You're so much more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a groundskeeper, and a landscaper. That's why you need versatile, durable Kubota equipment. We talked about Kendall Pettis for Oklahoma. This is the great catch he had last night against Tennessee. And what was an incredible game of the win over the Volunteers? Well, moments ago, Kendall Pettis just made another incredible catch in the outfield for OU. Crashing into the wall, robbing the Sooners of another run. Will slowly get up, but eventually back up onto his feet into the dugout. And he has been electric in the outfield for the Sooners. That is fearless, competitive, defensive, unbelievable outfield play. You talk, That changes the games. The score, obviously, taking scores away and then giving your team outs. I mean, it's just so much. The defensive value is so much to it. And to watch guys go out there and give it their bodies up to go make those plays, that's not easy, by the way. He made those diving catch look so easy. That is not easy, first and foremost. And then knowing you're going to hit that wall and still able to hold on to the baseball. New pitcher for the Cornhuskers. And now they've gone from Kyle Fralick to Kyle Perry. Freilich, his first year at Nebraska. Perry is a vet for the Sooners. He's in after the one inning from Freilich. This is the second appearance, by the way, for Perry in the tournament. Pitched against Baylor on Friday. And a perfect inning Against the Bears, that ball off the middle, going to get on through for Spikerman, his second straight base hit. Got a good start for the Sooners here in the bottom of the seventh. Just what they need to try to get, hopefully, this inning started. If you're a Sooners fan, driving that ball just back up the middle, stayed on that changeup away from him, was able to keep the barrel in there long enough and hit it hard enough to get him between the second baseman and the shortstop. Perry, the pitcher, has been with Nebraska since pre-COVID, going back to 2019. Here's Madrin. Strike one from Perry. A six-year grad on the mound here for Nebraska. That ball well hit. Right field. Madrin going deep. And that is gone. Cuts this to a one-run game. Bryce Madrin has the Sooners' first home run of 2024. 
Well, Madrid does a great job, Brandt, of recognizing off-speed pitch. Gets out there, sets his hands up, gets into a low position, holds it there just a little bit, gets something he can pull. And I mean, he leverages this barrel to drive his baseball out to right field. Watch this right. He sees off-speed pitch, speeds that barrel up. He knew it three steps out of the box. That ball was out of here. 12 homers for the Sooners a year ago. First of this year. And that's a foul ball hit by Carmichael. And Madrin, honorable mention, all big 12 honors last year. Only Sooner with an OPS over 1,000. Just delivered a huge hit. And this is now a one-run game. Still nobody out as Carmichael takes ball one. One ball, one strike. You know, you hear people say all the time, we talked about him early day, and I said, I probably need to quit saying it so much. Everybody talks about how baseball whack, can be slow. That ball smoked back up the middle, too. And then just like that, score changes. Baseball happens, and it can happen to you in a hurry. Again, you saw that incredible catch from Kendall Pettis in the last half inning. Maybe just gave some juice to that uh, momentum. Oklahoma dugout. Oh no, come on. I mean, that's an unreal coach. I mean, unreal play. I mean, it saves a, a possible run, you know, on, later on in that inning. I mean, it, a great catch. It gives you energy and I mean the value of defense and making plays like that. It's just it pumps everybody up and then obviously helps you and, and clear out the bases and get going. Now Snyder up there swinging. Fouls it off himself. Nothing new one from Kyle Perry. We have to take you back to this catch from Kendall Pettis again. The concentration, the athleticism, the wherewithal going into the wall to hang on to it. And let's don't leave out the guts to oh, go do man. that and the courage to go do that. As you described it, the athleticism, the angle, everything, the concentration. You know you're going to run into a wall? Not everybody wants to do that. OU comes back to win this game. You're going to remember that play. That's foul away. Nothing in two to Michael Snyder, who he himself had a really good yeah. defensive play yeah. at third. Yeah. Uh, OU's, you know, the, the day started with a bad defensive play, yeah. but since then, Oklahoma's defense has been tremendous. Yeah. Project of plan and, and great coaching, meaning, hey, something bad happens, game keeps going. You've got to keep playing. Go make another great play. And that's certainly what they've been able to do. Snyder takes that one low, ball one. And Carmichael for his third hit. You know, the, the yeah. mistake early in the game. and One ball, two strikes. Struck him out. That was a pitch Perry needed after giving up three straight base hits, including a home run. And one out here in the seventh inning. Uh, it's called a reverse pitch. What I mean by that is to the hitter, he's looking change up breakers, something secondary off the plate away from him to try to strike him out with. And then he comes in and dots him with an inside fastball, 87, 88 miles an hour. But to him, it probably looked 94, 95 miles an hour, perfectly executed from the mound. Rocco Garza Gangora has been a tough out for Nebraska today. He's been on all three times. A couple of base hits and a walk. And drove in a run of the fifth. Outside on the changeup. One ball, one strike. Garza Gore, sophomore from Laredo, Texas. Good freshman year last year for OU, hitting 293. Good throw back to first base, but Carmichael back in. One of the top outfield prospects in Texas coming out of high school, but Garza Gongora playing at first base for Oklahoma. Well, that baseball down in South Texas is important. There's a lot of great players down there. You go down and watch a high school playoff game, you're going to bump it. You better get there early because you're going to bump into about three, 4,000 people pulling into that game. Yeah. 
the Hispanic Titanic, Ivan Melendez, the South Texas player. There's a, there's a bunch. I mean, that list of and big leaguers as well, by the way. It's important down there. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two -two. Bottom of the seventh. Two runs already in for Oklahoma. On the homer from Bryce Matron. Carmichael at first base. Perry, back-to-back -back strikeouts. Had him thinking he was going to try to go to a breaker away. Goes to a fastball away. And, I mean, I mean, he just cut the outside corner of that plate. Now, we may be seeing a pitching change or uh, a change going to a different with a right-handed hitter coming up. Rob Childress on his way to the mound. But, I mean, he just absolutely cut that outer half of the plate in the corner in half. Here comes Coach Childress. He'll take the ball from the vet, Kyle Perry. Some trouble early in the inning for Perry, but strikes out his next two batters. We'll hand the ball off to a new pitcher. We're back after this. Quite the spot to be making your Nebraska debut. Evan Borst, a first-year transfer out of Iowa Central Community College, is in for the first time this season. Look at his numbers from last year. In the Juco ranks, seven saves, 4.42 ERA, with two and three and 12 relief appearances. He could also hit quite a bit as well. Two-way player at Iowa Central Community College. He'll face Kendall Pettis. And again, talked about his heroics, that huge catch, top of the inning, and how many times, Ty, do you see a guy make a play on defense and then come up with a play, make a play there? Yeah, it just seems to happen often enough. And, well, first of all, you got to find guys that will make plays like that guy's made. That is pops this one up, and it is out of play. Obviously, in baseball, you, even as coaches, you recognize that, by the way. If somebody on the other team makes a great play or somebody does for you, you're like, oh, and he's coming up this, this half inning. I mean, it just adds a little bit to the excitement. And, and, and he's got a positive vibe going up to the plate, right? He's feeling good about something he just did defensively. Able to lay off. Good cutter. There from Borscht. Two balls, one strike. Had his hitless today, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Came back with a breaking ball, 2-2. Two -two. Well, that's his pitch. That's what he's in there to do. That's why he's in there right now facing Pettis, who's going to go in there and throw those breakers. 84, 85 on our breakers. Try to keep it just below his barrel and away from him. That ball laced into the glove of Overbeek at third. Boy, Pettis. Good contacts. 
but Overbeek in perfect position. However, OU has cut this to a one-run game. Bryce Madrin hits Oklahoma's first home run of the 2024 season. Makes it a 6-5 game in Arlington. Huskers on top. Heading into the eighth inning on Flow Sports. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. Childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Next to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. Most amazing care anywhere. Elevate your ballpark experience with a tour of Globe Life Field and experience the home of the Texas Rangers like never before. Go behind the scenes and explore premium spaces, unique club settings, luxury suites, and more. Along the way, you'll discover rich history, impressive architecture, and fun photo opportunities around every corner. Globe Life Field's many tour offerings are sure to take your ballpark visit to the next level. For more information and to book your experience, visit globelifefield.com. With Pie Prime by Solo Stove, you can finally think outside the cardboard box. The best pizza isn't delivered to the front door. It's made in the backyard. It doesn't come from a restaurant. It comes from you. Anywhere can be your favorite pizza spot. Any day of the week, all year long. Pie Prime is the pizza oven that's simple enough to be your first and powerful enough to be your last. Pie Prime by Solo Stove. Some young ones having a good time on the Sunday afternoon for the third and final day of the Shriners Children's College Showdown. A lot of high-level baseball has been played all weekend long at a good one right now. One-run game, 6-5 Nebraska heading into the top of the eighth inning. I'm giggling because the mom told the, the son was standing up having a great time waving. Mom said, sit down, son, you got to sit down. <laughs> that would have been me, by the way, is why I'm giggling. The one telling the kid to sit down or the no, one, the going one crazy? getting told to sit down. Ironically, right now, Ty is standing up. Yeah, I, am. I could be telling you to sit down right now. You could, but it wouldn't help. I, I can't. It's hard. You know this. You know I've worked together a lot. I, I, I get. I love this game so much, and I enjoy it so much, and, and I have to stand up. I mean, it's 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 how I like the beauty game. Gabe Swanson leading off. To the top of the eighth here for Nebraska. Or actually, no, got a pinch hitter up here for the Cornhuskers right now. In place of Swanson. And the pinch hitter is Garrett Anglum. Had a big home run against Baylor on Friday. Anglin with a fly ball to right. That is slicing foul, not a play. I didn't figure if it worked once, let's try it again. So Swanson finishes his day over two with a couple of strikeouts. We'll also see a new left fielder for Nebraska. Anglin, a junior from La Vista, Nebraska. Speaking of left field, by the way, there's Pettis. Made the incredible catch in the seventh inning. Cap full, three and two. Anglum got clipped by that pitch. So runner on for the Cornhuskers to start the eighth inning. And the young bat boy going to take the bat of Angler back into the dugout. Got a, I'm telling you what, that had been so much fun. Look at all the way, knows exactly where he's putting it, knows whose bat it was. But every hitter's got their spot for their bat, by the way. And he knows exactly where that goes. Second inning of relief for Jet Lotus. And now Bradford showing a bunt. It's ball one. Now as the game goes on, you get fewer out, so you start to try to the possibility of moving hitters into I mean, runners into scoring position by bunting. 
Hit and run, a lot of different options for Nebraska right now. Runner takes off. Carmichael with the throw, and it's not in time. Yeah, that's fake bunt and steal. That's what we just talking about. There's a lot of different options for them to run at that point in time. That's a classic. Everybody shows bunt. Everybody thinks it's bunt. Runner on first is able to get out of there with a great jump and gets to second base. Now, I mean, truthfully, you could go back to a bunt if you want to right now with a left-handed hitter. If you're trying to you hit the ball to the right side to get the guy 90 feet to third base with less than two outs. Now you'll see Oklahoma back their defense up, get out of that bunt coverage now with two strikes, knowing that he's going to, Bradford's going to probably be swinging right here. Now he's trying to just pull something on the ground to the right side. Looks at strike three. So Lotus a strikeout. And one out here in the eighth inning. Going to bring up Cole Evans, who had the great base running play earlier in the game. Look at the strikeout here from Lotus. Got him on the inner half. Well, he saw that ball run back towards the inside corner of the plate. Started probably at his hip and then started moving back with that late tail. Second strikeout for Lotus today. And an OU pitching has piled up the strikeouts here in Arlington. It's just no set pattern from Skip on, and when, with his with his pitchers. I mean, he knows what they do well. Like, and if you get in a tight spot, they're always going to no, not always. Historically, they're going to go to what they do best: best pitch, best location, whatever. But, but you don't. You, when you watch them, there's no. I can't sit up here and go. I know he's going to throw this right here. Second time through the lineup, I know he's going to follow this pattern. I mean, it, they, he's just so masterful at calling the game. And now they've got to be able to execute it. Same with Rob Childress. So those guys are still got to be able to execute the pitches. 41 strikeouts for Suter pitching so far in the tournament compared to 14 walks. You did see moments ago Skip Johnson's got both a left and right handed pitcher warming up in the bullpen. Runner goes for third, ground ball to third, and Snyder in position going to make the tag for the fielder's choice. Okay, that, that play. Oh, yeah, that's a great defensive play. All right, runner goes. They were off of him in coverage a little at second. He's stealing third. He opened that hole on the five hole. Watch this right here. He breaks. He's got to go cover the bag, and it hit it to him. Had that ball been two feet to the left of him, that's a base hit by him trying to steal the base at third base and then tags him out. He runs him out of the baseline. And that'll send Anglo in the dugout. That might be it for Lotus. And Skip Johnson's going to make a call to the bullpen here for Oklahoma. Coming to the game now for the Sooners with Oklahoma trailing by run, Chase Miner. 6'5 Nebraska with a change on the hill for the Sooners here on Flow Sports.
Runner on, two outs in the eighth inning as Oklahoma has made a call to the bullpen. Jace Miner is in now for the Sooners. Lanky lefty, 6'3", 182, and a first-year transfer to the program from Wichita State. And look at his numbers with the Shockers last year in 44 innings of work at a low ERA, 2.05 last year in the AAC, now pitching here in the Big 12. It comes a relief of Jet Lotus. And for Meyer, this is first pitching appearance at Oklahoma. Skip Johnson trying to figure out a way to cool down Riley Silva, who's had two really excellent at-bats the last two times up. Uh, keeping score. How about that, Tom? Uh, no, I, I and, mean, look, I not, love it. And it's not old school fans. you got yeah. young fans keeping score in the game. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's awesome to learn how to, uh, first of all, learn how to score a game and, and how to do that and then be a part of it, pay attention. I wonder if his dad's giving him a test at the end of the game. Well, you see, what's funny, dad has his smartphone out, and the kids have the scorebook. <laughs> That's in there, a strike from Miner. Going right after Silva. Ty said it last two times up. Silva, base hits. Drove in Evans in the sixth inning. One ball, one strike. But it's a tough arm action on left hand hitters. What I mean by that, that is a low three quarter, right at a three quarter arm action. And when he steps at the hitter, left handed hitters, it's almost he's putting so much pressure on your front hip and your front shoulder because his arm's out that way. It's almost like it's coming at you. you Get a look at it right here that right off the shoulder area kind of steps towards him. Ground ball to the right side, right to lane, and that will take care of the Huskers in the top of the eighth inning. So Jace Miner does his job coming out of the bullpen, and now Oklahoma coming to bat, trailing by one. It is a 6-5 game here in Arlington, and a good one between OU and Nebraska. You're so much more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a groundskeeper, and a landscaper. That's why you need versatile, durable Kubota equipment. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. If you want to Saturday, June 15th, Globe Life Field. With special guests, Tedeschi Trucks Band. And Marcus King. On sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. New album, Higher, available now. and versatility built in like Kubota BX and L-Series compact tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience. And Shriners Children's, six remarkable kids have each teamed up with a participating university for the Shriners Children's College Showdown Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to ShrinersShowdown.com to donate in honor of your favorite team today. What an unbelievable weekend of college baseball it has been here in Arlington. High-level play, emotions running high for every dugout here at Globe Life Field. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning and in another good one. Nebraska, Oklahoma, 6-5 lead, Cornhuskers, and OU coming to bat. OU got a big two-run homer, the seventh from Bryce Madger to cut this to a one-run lead. It remains 6-5 as Jackson Willits leads off in the eighth inning here for the Sooners. It's been a great partnership and a great weekend. The sponsors, Kubota, Shriners, the Rangers, Flow Sports. I mean, this has just been an unbelievable experience for 
everybody. I mean, I, look, I've walked around the stadium in between games, and I'll bump into different fans. And even last night, I'll say something to them about, hey, you guys enjoying it? And everybody has been so excited and just unbelievable what this tournament has been in opening weekend. It's been exciting. Had to get all for a great cause. Just saw a shot of it out there in center field. More than $145,000 donated to Shriners Children's by the fans that have come to the ballpark, scanning that code out there in center field. I was talking to Josh Boyd, the assistant general manager for the Rangers last night. He was so accommodating as well. That ball is caught by Brumball. Hard shot for Willits. Brumball with a good play for the first out of the inning. That ball was struck well. There's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes the game gets in the way of it. It's a good-looking swing. <laughs> you can even see the kind of a smirk on his face. He's been on the other end of those before where it was him. That ball is smashed. Gets up, catches it. I know they make it look easy, but it's not. Watch him have to elevate a little bit. Watch it into his club. Oh, a little snow cone at the top of it. Big out there for Evan Borst. One out here in the eighth. Now Isaiah Lane. Actually, a pinch hitter has been called up here for OU. Lane called back. Pinch hitter is Jackson Nicholas. Played in game one. And Nicholas has played the first two games. He started yeah. game one against Oregon. Two for six so far in the tournament. A couple of strikeouts for Nicholas, who will likely platoon second base once he reaches the top of the ninth inning in place of Isaiah Lane. Nicholas pops this one up. No play there for Nebraska. Jackson Nicholas, junior out of Overland Park, Kansas. Two years ago, named the Big 12's all-freshman team. Had a lot of big at-bats in Oklahoma's run of the World Series in 2022. Remember, that was a really young team then. And had that great run to Omaha. Swing and a miss here and strikes out. Borst with his first strikeout. Two up and two down to the eighth inning. Get a chance to look at this right here. Fastball away. I think he was sitting in there, Brent, looking for a change up or more that like that slider that runs back into him. Well, I tell you what, he had he hammers the outside part of the plate with that fastball. A good late life to it. Surprising, not able to foul it off. Strike three, that's a quality pitch. Another pinch hitter called up here. It is Carter Frederick. In place of Jason Walker, the DA spot. Frederick one for three here in the tournament. And takes inside on a breaking ball, 2-0. Oh. Frederick with a fly ball hit out towards center field. Silva on the run. He'll make the catch, and Evan Borst makes quick work of the bottom part of the OU order in the eighth inning. To the ninth we go. 6-5 Nebraska near Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas.
catch me. Watch me jump, dive, and splash. Put me by a pool, I'll be soaked in a flash. A girl in the water to swim like a fish. Just two simple legs. That was my wish. I'm a sea turtle, shark, a seal on a slide. This is my day of fun, with nothing to hide. Watch me. Pioneers in orthotic and prosthetic technology at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Protecting what matters most is the mission that matters most. At Lockheed Martin, we know today's threats come from behind, above, and below. And we make sure those who serve stay ahead of them by connecting platforms necessary to dominate every domain across air, land, sea, space, and cyber, using technologies that protect in the same moment they detect. The mission is a safer, more secure world. Our promise is to help make it happen. And here we are at Globe Life Field, home of the reigning World Series champion, Texas Rangers. First world title in franchise history. A remarkable run last year through the postseason. Texas beating Tampa Bay, Baltimore, in-state rival Houston to get to the World Series and then knocked off the Arizona Diamondbacks to win the title. We go to the top of the ninth inning. And OU trying to keep this a one-run deficit. As Skip Johnson again going to the bullpen. Dylan Crooks is into the ninth inning now for Oklahoma. First year transfer out of Paris Junior College. And is from the greater DFW area from Euless, Texas. So Crooks in the game now making his Oklahoma debut. He said that a few times over now to this OU bullpen. Well, the Huskers in the right part of their order. Back to the top of the order right here, trying to push something across to create a little bit more spacing between the one-run lead. They're definitely right at the top of it. I'm sure they would love to get somebody on and be able to run their offense. Crooks, a six pitcher OU is used today. One ball, one strike. To Caden Brumball, leadoff man for Nebraska. Had a big double to fifth inning when Nebraska scored three times. I think it reflects the kind of staff that OU has and the depth. Sixth pitcher, third game, beginning of the year. I mean, I just, I mean and we're sitting out there watching 90 plus again with power breakers. I mean, that just shows the depth they have. If you're in Nebraska, you would love another run, maybe more here, because the top of the order is coming up for Oklahoma at the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, both teams are at the top. Yeah. I mean, this is how, this is how the ninth inning is supposed to land for for this kind of game in one run games. Two balls, two strikes to Brumball. That'll fill the count. I'll tell you this, I'll take from a coach's perspective, you got a pitching coach in there for Nebraska right now. He's paying attention and rooting for the offense, but what he's done is gone through there and figured out there's Rob Childress right there. He knows exactly who's coming up in the ninth already, how they're gonna pitch him and who they're gonna go at him with. In the air to right field, Mandarin makes a catch on a back pedal. And what a way for Crooks here at the top of the ninth inning. Here bring up Joshua Overbeek. So Crooks, the first batter he faces in an OU uniform, able to induce a fly out. Overbeek, one of the big hits for Nebraska today, a two-run single in the fifth. Grounds this one to first, and it stays fair. Knocked down by Garza Gungora. And Crooks does his job covering over first base and two big outs to start the inning. 
for Oklahoma. Yeah, and a good play. It, it, it seems simple, and it, you'd think it is and would be just a routine ground ball to the first baseman. But as soon as that ball kind of ricochets off of him, I've seen countless first basemen kind of panic a little bit, overreach, miss the ball, trying to pick it up. Watch this right here. He does a good job of setting down on it, gets away from him, doesn't panic, puts his hand on top of the baseball, picks it up, and flips it to the pitcher covered. Now Dylan Carey. Single for Nebraska in the first inning. He's got four hits so far in this tournament. Unable to check his swing. Doug Williams doesn't call for the appeal and makes the call himself. One ball, one strike. Nebraska looking for a two and one finish to the weekend. So is Oklahoma. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Nebraska, the opening day win to start the year against Baylor. Oklahoma falling to Oregon. On day two, Nebraska lost to Texas Tech in a game that got away late. OU won a thriller over Tennessee last night. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Brooks out of the bullpen, faces the minimum. Keeps this a one-run game. OU down by a run and down to his final three outs when we come back on Flow Sports. Marine Max is your boat and yacht sales and service resource on the Gulf Coast, dedicated to fulfilling all your boating needs and helping you find the perfect boat or yacht. Visit Marine Max today, your one stop shop for all things boating. It is a one-run game right now, and the difference, you go all the way back to the first inning. Nebraska with two outs, struck out. There was a big strikeout of Tyler Stone, but on the drop third strike, Easton Carmichael throwing to first base, airmailed the throw to Rocco Garza-Gungora, allowed two runs to score. And those two runs looming really large right now. Part of the sixth-run day for Nebraska, and they lead 6-5. Heading into the bottom of the ninth inning. However, silver line for OU. You got the top of the order coming up. Well, you sure do. And I mean, it's couldn't have landed any better for OU lineup wise and give them a chance. And now, with Nebraska making a, another change on the mound, I mean, our, our scorebooks on the pitching side of it, probably, it's got like 12 names so far or something like that. But it shows you again the depth that both these teams have. and. Well, buckle up. Here we go. It's the bottom of the ninth. It's Casey Dice had the save against Baylor on Friday. His second appearance here in Arlington. In that save appearance, got all three outs, only gave up one hit, and had a strikeout of the Bears. Faces Spikerman, Madrin, and Carmichael here in the ninth inning. There you see Spikerman trying to bring the third baseman and or the pitcher, make him try to go over and field a bunt on a drag and I tell you what those guys get out of the box as quick as Spikerman does if he gets that drag down or that push however you want to call it he can fly down that line puts a lot of stress on that defense and that's bouncing foul we'll 
Well, Spikerman came up with a huge hit last night. The game was tied 1-1 in the 10th inning against Tennessee, and it was John Spikerman, the go-ahead base hit. Really opened the floodgates for the Sooners. Scored four times in the top of the 10th, and Spikerman delivers again. Here with a base hit to lead off the bottom of the ninth inning. And Spikerman is on for the third time, three straight base hits. It's so similar. The swings, watch, it's almost like a tennis lob that he's hitting that ball over to the left side, just like he did the night before. He kind of lob or drove that ball in the, in the left center, this time directly towards the third baseman. Just kind of keeps that bat in there long enough and lifts it over out to left field for a base hit. So the tying one is on for Oklahoma to lead off the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's Madrin. Homeward his last time up. A two-run shot of the seventh inning. And right now represents the go-ahead run. It doesn't appear they're bunting. They really got a runner at first. You got a hole open for the left-handed hitter to pull a ball. In the dirt and smothered by Karen. That's going to hold Sparkman at first base. Wow, that was a great read, particularly with nobody out. You know you're the tying run. Two outs earlier in the game, you might gamble right there and get out of there and try to get second base on ball and dirt. Great job of running the bases, holding up and not going. Strike one. Dice in his first year on this Nebraska staff. A Juco transfer from Pasco Hernandez Junior College. And again, making his second appearance for Nebraska here in Arlington. Fouled away, strike two. On, you know, in baseball, the, the, the ninth inning has always just brings out so much. I mean, your emotions, every, you know the end could be near. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it, it's just the excitement. Not that the game's not exciting all the way, but you get to the ninth inning and everybody's paying attention. Madrin grounds that one foul. And Spikerman's going to have to head back to first base. It's kind of like I used to tell our players, you don't dream about what you did in the third inning when you're laying in bed. You're laying in bed at night trying to be the hero. You dream about what happens in the bottom of the ninth. Awaiting on deck for Oklahoma, Easton Carmichael. Fly ball hit towards left field. Anglum in perfect position. That's a huge out there because it also keeps Spikerman at first base. Well, he does. I mean, look, that's their offense with the with uh, Madrin hitting. They're, they were going to let him left-handed hitter, maybe catch a breaker, pull it to the right side. And, and I got to be honest with you right now, Dice is doing a good job of holding the run game. He's probably a sub one, three, five, meaning time from the mound to the plate to the catcher. And so he's doing a good job mixing his looks up as well. We showed the replay of the play. Nebraska scored twice in the first inning. Right now, the difference in the game on the air and throw from Carmichael. But Ty and I have talked about it since that play. Carmichael at the plate, three hits defensively, has been really good. And a chance to atone even more here. Rolls that foul, though, and falls behind 0-2. Well, he's had, yeah, he's had that day where it didn't start off great. A lot of guys would have folded their 10 and just said, Coach, I, you know, and you were just a bad body language, all those things. He has not. He's done nothing but play outstanding since that moment of it. Just made a, you know, it happens. A part of this game. Pops it up. Evans a long run. He's going to make the catch behind Brumball, and now the suitor is down to the final out. Oh, it's a good job of getting the ball in on his hands with two strikes. Kind of pinned that barrel down in behind him a little bit where all he could do is get a fly ball out to right field. Right fielder doing a good job of coming in and catching that ball, communicating all the way in on that catch. Nebraska one out away from a winning weekend. Oklahoma down to its final out. This is Michael Snyder, hitless today. One for nine of the tournament. That ball hit well to left. That's going to get down for a base hit. Spikerman on his way to third, and he's rounding third. Play the plate is not in time. This game is tied. Michael Snyder 
drives in John Spikerman. It's 6-6. Six, six. Wow, just one little bobble in the outfield. The left fielder had to go. Swans had to go a long ways to get the one hop on the line drive. Bobbled it in his club. The whole time, he, Spikerman, was flying around those bases, trying to get to third base, trying to force what just happened. A slight bobble came up with it, and they were unable to get the relay in time to get him at the plate. That ball was hammered, too, Brant, down the line. Just that We've seen bobbles in the outfield this weekend a couple times on ground balls, and... Allowed to run to score. Oklahoma down to his final breath. Coming through. And now Nebraska is going to elect to walk Rocco Garza Gungora. A free pass over to first base. Well, they're going to go with the right, right matchup. And of course, We've all we've seen what Pettis has done today defensively again and again, but they're going to opt to go to the right right matchup. Maybe bring that slider into play for him a little bit more, as opposed to with a left-handed hitter. So you see, Coach Childress taking his time out there. Going to go talk to him about the plan of what they want to try to do. Oklahoma a season ago when trailing after eight, 0 and 25. They've come back to tie this game, had the heroics late in the 10th inning against Tennessee last night. And Will Bolt's team was once up 6-3. OU has rallied back to tie it at 6. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a good coach. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen, but Coach Jones going out there slowing the game down. Hey, everybody, let's catch your breath. All right, everybody, hold on a second. We knew we were one pitch away from in this game. Hold on. Let's catch your breath. Here's what we're doing defensively. Here's our alignment. And then the last thing he'll tell him is, here's what we're going to throw. Here's what we're going to attack him with on the first pitch. And guess who's up? Kendall Pettis, the big defensive play. That saved a run from scoring in the seventh inning. And now a chance to deliver here with a winning run at second. Strike one. Good looking tight fastball right there in on his hands. They went after him last time. He came up or two at bats ago trying to get the ball in on him as well. And back inside on the changeup again. One ball, one strike. And Pettis has been remarkable defensively to start the year. At the plate, kind of a different story. One for 11. He struck out five times. Now, one ball and two strikes. Could we have extras for a second straight game in Arlington? Or you know, if that's the way it's going to be, that's just more baseball for you and I. And that got a piece of him. Pettis hit by a pitch. And the winning run for the Sooners now 90 feet away. Well, a lot of things just opened up now what you got to remind yourself if you're a Husker fan but also the players out there in the pitcher you're one pitch away from getting out of this settle back down catch your breath a little bit go back to pitching like you know you're capable of doing and now if you're OU you're 90 feet away wild pitch an error a lot of different things an infield hit or just a regular base hit so now your opportunities open up quite a bit what a spot here for the freshman Jackson Willits. First pitch swinging up the middle. Base hit. Sooners are going to win it. An OU walk off. 7 6 the win over Nebraska. Look at him, Senator. You don't think college baseball isn't fun? Look at him, chase him all the way out in the left field. What a great at bat. First pitch gets it in the middle of the plate, drives it right back up, and the defensive players were right up the middle, too. But what an unbelievable comeback by the Sooners in a tremendous first game in the third day of this tournament. OU down to its final outs. Got the game time double from Michael Snyder. Three batters later, it is the freshman Jackson Willis with his first career walk-off hit at Oklahoma. And how about the final two days of this tournament for the visitors out of Norman? 
They went in 10 innings over Tennessee late last night. First game of the day today. A walk-off win and a walk-off hit for the freshman wearing the double sevens. Jackson Willis. How good what a do you finish. Think, how good do you think he felt when he saw that ball go through the middle of the field? You saw him throw his hands up. He knew it exactly what it meant to Sooner Nation, to his teammates. But you're right, Brent. How about the resiliency of the, of the Sooners in the last two games to hang in there, hang in there, fight from behind, come up with great plays in the defense, in the outfield, and then come up with the big hits in the ninth inning. What a finish again for Oklahoma. And what a game between these two programs who had been long-time rivals. Big 8, Big 12, played each other 250 times, meeting number 251, a classic here in Arlington. And you know what gets kind of left out of this a little bit? How about OU's pitching the second half of the game? The last three or four years, they piece it together using, what, six, seven arms to close this thing out and different angles, different, you know, left and right, and a lot of different guys came in to hold them right there. Great defense again and gives you a chance to get you. The game's never over till it's over. Boy, if you are Nebraska right now, though, back-to-back -back tough losses in the ninth inning. It was a tie game against Texas Tech last night. And the, the Huskers gave up three runs, lost 6-3, and give up two runs in the ninth inning today and lose 7-6. Six, six. We're now going to go down to the field to Leanta Peroni, standing by with a hero, Jackson Willis. Walk-off win to take home two here in one of the greatest stages in baseball. What does this win and what did that hit mean to you and the Sooners? You know, it means a lot. We worked hard, worked hard all fall. So to finally see it starting to come together out here, it's great. What is it about this team that just knows how to handle the pressure and bring the excitement in a late game? You know, we fight every day in practice. It's just as intense as out here with the bottom of the ninth with the bases loaded. So the coaches bring it every day and us players bring it every day were swinging great defense was killing it what areas of improvement and growth do you want to see from the team as you want to keep up the momentum heading into the rest of the season i think we just got to keep being us if we play the way we can play i think we'll be fine at the end of the day so just play hard and play the way we play every day leaving the weekend with two wins congratulations all right thank you leanza so again, Ty, what a finish and what a way to start the final day here in Arlington. Could you not just hear the excitement? And as he was out of breath, one from running from his teammates, but to the excitement of what that represents. They put the work in, they put their time in, and they get a big win. Oklahoma leaving Arlington with two wins in three days. Nebraska going one and two. So for Ty Harrington and our entire Flow Sports production team, I'm Brad Freeman. This has been a presentation of Rev Entertainment and Flow Sports. The final score in this one, Oklahoma 7, Nebraska 6. Stay tuned for Game 2 of the day of the Shriners Children's College Showdown between the Texas